Yeah, it's the 501, baby. Uh huh. You know how we get down on the Whoopin' podcast. Woo. Shout out OD, shout out G Homes, it's the baby. Big sexy. Do it. Woo, yeah, yeah. Woo, yeah. Woo. yeah. yeah. Yo, welcome back to another episode of the Woo Pig Podcast, coming to you live from the Insurance Max Studios, where we're talking about everything Arkansas, Razorback football and basketball every Monday, Thursday, and Saturday at 8.30. Also, check us out on the WooPig.com. But first things first, I want you to experience peace of mind with Insurance Max your one-stop solution for home, auto, and commercial insurance statewide. Don't wait. Call today for a free, no-obligation quote. Secure your future with Insurance Max, where protection meets affordability. Dial now and safeguard what matters most. 870-534-2823. Holler at my guy, Wes, Caleb, and Sandy. They're going to take good care of you. And, man, we want you to know the Woo Pig Podcast. Man, we streaming on all major platforms. Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Twitch. Make sure you subscribe to us on all our platforms. And if you enjoy audio only, we got you covered. You can check us out everywhere. Apple Podcasts, but we really rock with Spotify. You can switch between audio and video. Don't forget to go over to Spotify, run it up for you. Subscribe to us. We don't even care if you listen. Just want you to subscribe. Uh, Next, man, we got to talk about the OG Sponsors. 3M Electric serving Northwest Arkansas. They are your trusted commercial and residential electrical contractor. As a SDVOSB, they're dependable and reliable with no job, too big or small when it comes to your electrical needs. Contact 3M Electric, 479-408-9865. Let them know you heard it on the Woo Pig Podcast. They got something special for you. And, man, we got to give a quick shout-out to our new sponsor, Remax Platinum, serving Central and South Arkansas. You're looking to find your dream home or sell a property, invest in a property, hassle-free. Look no further than Remax Platinum, where client satisfaction is their top priority. When buying, selling, investing, Melanie, Melody and her team got you taken care of for all your real estate journey, smooth and successful. Ready to take that next step? Contact my girl Melody, 501-366-4407, and let Remax Platinum turn your real estate dreams into reality. Don't wait. Call now. And you already know what that being said, who I got in the building. <laughs> Yo, what it do, Woo Pig family? It's your boy, G. Holmes, in the building, a.k.a. Big Sexy. Somebody out there holler for me. Oh, 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 my God. Ooh, what it do, OD? Hey, man, another day, baby. We back in the building talking about these hogs, baby. <laughs> man, you know what it do, man. Who we got with us today, bro? Man, you know we take the bad little brother everywhere we go, man. But, you know, he probably somewhere doing something he ain't supposed to do. So, oh, wait, man, wait, man, wait, man, wait, man. So now we had to bring. Oh, ho, ho, ho. We had to bring Box with us. Man, I neglected to get his theme music. That's what yeah, I did. You did. I, I ne- you did. You did that. Uh, bro, that's on me. That's on me. That's on me, bro. What's up, man? How you, you have a good day today, Box? Long and hard. <laughs> Pause. Bro, me. I, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. Woo! <laughs> hey, man. Slow down with that, bro. <laughs> Oh, that's what they doing now at the dealership, bro? Okay. All right. <laughs> it was long, hard, and a little bit wet. Man, oh, no my diddy, God, man. man. No ditty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no ditty. <laughs> oh, but man, that's what's man. up, bro. 
Well, man, we got a good show today, man. We're going to talk about yes, some sir. Arkansas news and rumors, man. Mostly news, hardly ru- any rumors, man. Uh, but y'all saw y'all saw the news about KJ Jefferson arrested. Mm. But my question is, why they just now arresting him? Why they just now putting this picture out there? I, I don't I, I don't like that. I think that's uh, I think that's suspect, man. Why they just now doing it now? I've been arrested before, and I don't know about y'all, <gasps> but I ain't never when they arrest you, they don't <laughs> wait to take your picture. I'm just saying nah. they don't they don't wait nah. to say we're going to give you a year to come back and arrest you. Why are they just nah, not putting it that. out there? It just seems suspect to me, man. That's all I'm saying. Bro, I I with you on that one, OD. Come on, man. He said, I mean, I I watched the uh I mean, the little video or whatever that he put out about he had a ticket that Come on, man. I, I don't it's been a long time since I got a speeding ticket, but he also got reckless driving. He said he was driving in, it, you know, in excess of thirty miles an hour, or something like that, above the speed. I mean, he was, you know, in probably one of them little fast cars he had. He probably up there on on the freeway forty nine, burning down through there. I know what it what it is. We had bikes, you know. He had a fast car, so you know he might have been going two hundred. Mm-hmm. So they it. didn't want. They 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 cut the university a deal. They was like, I know he y'all guy, and we'll wait until next you know next season or whatever if he goes pro, and then we'll you know we'll get it. But we he gonna he gonna uh, he gonna get this work. <laughs> I, it just I makes no. Missed, s- go ahead, go ahead, box. I think he missed court date. Nah, he didn't miss court date. He he actually yeah. went on 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 whatever he went on Twitter, YouTube, whatever he went on Instagram, mm-hmm. and said he was supposed to go to court yet yesterday. And after court, they arrested him. But it still don't make no sense, though, Box. I think he missed court date because I mean it's a lot of things that could have happened before. Now he ain't, he ain't had to come back to pay no ticket, right? I know, he right? He got enough money. Could have been could have been paid that. His lawyers could have could have could have sit in court with him. I think he's supposed to have been in court. He missed court date, so they arrested him. Mm-hmm. They had a warrant out for his arrest. They didn't put it in the public. That mm-hmm. what happens so when you a... get arrested. Right. Mm. That failure to appear is what that, that failure is. failure to appear. That's what well, happened. He said he got three days of community service, he, but it, it just all sounds kind it. of fishy to me. So Yeah. It's all fishy, man. But... They you know. doing hey, they doing him a solid by not putting out the real story. They didn't miss court date. That would happen. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, man. Let me before we jump over here, man, to our next segment, man. I gotta uh read my super chats. I got a couple of them. Uh shout out Woo Pig Double O. He said, Woo Pig fan, what it do? Salute. Man, we appreciate you, man. Thanks for rocking with us, Woo Pig Double O. Yes, sir. And William Richards, man, we ain't seen you in a while, man. We, we miss Dicks. you. <laughs> man, thank you for supporting the channel, like always, man. He says, "Howdy, fellas." What up, no? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, jumping back over here, uh, man. The next one, man. I know y'all heard about the boy Jerry Jones breaking bread. Told them boys. Now this is this is Twitter stuff right here. I don't know if he actually came out and actually said this, but Jerry Jones mm-hmm. offering double in NIL for any player that was going to go to Kentucky. To come to the Razorbacks. To go to Razorbacks. To come to Arkansas. Double. Mm. Y'all believe that story? No. No? I do because unless the, unless the AI did a hell of a job, he said it out of his own mouth in video. Mm. When? Bro, send that to me. I gotta see it. I gotta yeah, see everywhere. it. I ain't seen and it. I, I ain't been everywhere, man. I, I ain't been everywhere. I can promise you bro, that. So send it to the me. Dude, the dude said he don't get cramps in his hands signing them checks. That came out his mouth. Oh man. That, Od, that, what that you say? Man. Hey man, I didn't see him say it. I don't know if it's legit or not, but it's definitely out there in these streets. And uh, I'm with little Joker, man. Jerry ready to buy the natty. Nah, that was Cap, <laughs> Cape Hustle, my bad. He said Jones ready to buy the natty. I'm with him. So, 
These boys breaking bread for Kyle, ain't they? Hey, man, maybe Bro. they going to come through. Bro, they going to say. Got the, go ahead. They got the, they got their money. They got to put their money down on something. Man, these guys getting old. They know they ain't got that much time left. They don't want to leave it to their grandkids. Yep. They don't. They don't want to leave it to their grandkids and kids. They know they're gonna blow through it. So what they say? <laughs> they finna give it away to somebody else. That yeah. what happens. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But he need to get the money to the to the illegitimate child he got out there that's tr- suing for that money. <laughs> Come on, OD. Yeah, that's what he's he he Hey man, you leave Jerry alone. She's gonna, she gonna get hers on the table. Don't worry about uh, it. She probably <laughs> been getting on the table for years. She should just shut up. You kept cashing them checks. Kept cashing them checks. Just be quiet. She wanted some not- I mean, some recognition. That's what it was. Hey, that's the thing. Where if Jerry Jones donates seven million dollars to the NIL, that's tax write off. Oh yeah, he'll get that back, man. He ain't losing mm-hmm. a dime. Neither nah. one of them. <laughs> But Jerry Jones, I think Jerry Jones did it because he probably just tired of Kentucky. So he said, you know what? <laughs> this is what I'm going to do. Whatever y'all give, I'm going to double it just to shut y'all mouth. You know, well, Jerry Jones, arrogant. Jerry arrogant. Well, let me tell you this, too. So I'm going to tell you, Coach Cal, he different, too, though. So he got the type of swagger that he had Walmart and – um. It was Walmart and the Tysons in the same room talking to him about some money, about some NIL money and some, you know. And they was like, this the first time that those two heavy-hitting donors been in the same room together. So maybe he came to him and was like, look here, man. I don't know what it is, but this state, y'all got all this money up here and y'all ain't doing nothing. And he might have started pointing out where they really stood with the NIL program. In both they, you know, in both both of those major sports, he might have said he might have brought them to them to him like that because now all of a sudden you're starting to see these other big time people wanting to put money. If that is true, that would make sense to me. That okay, now one 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 billionaire say, all right, let's go. Tyson was the first one. Was like, look here, man. We got all this chicken money. It's people eating chicken 24 hours a day. And Tyson getting some of it. So he just stepped out there to a to a cabillion there like that. We all excited. They were like, oh, snap. They offering this dude, you know, $8 million. Man, man, he don't care nothing about no $8 million a year. That's what it's going to take. Man, y'all hurry up and, and, and you know what I'm saying to get this deal done. What else you need? That's why that's probably what he said because he was just fed up with it. When people that they got money like that get fed up with something, when that's the best time to get some money. Because you know they be like, what else? What else is gonna take? I mean, think about it. As frustrated as you are, as you can get, what if you could just say any amount of money to fix it at that moment? That's how he was. So I, I feel that. Mm. Let me tell you how powerful and how much respect everybody got from John Calipari. He got Joe Johnson on the hill out the decade. You feel me? I'm telling you. Dude got some. It, it ain't announced, my, though. No. Is Joe, it official? Joe, when, when, when Joe Johnson came to that press conference, that was the first time he done been at there in over a decade. Bro, he ain't even coming. He don't come to no games. None of that. You see him out in Little Rock every now and then, but. That dude moved different, bro. You know what I'm saying? He moved like an OG. Yeah. Facts, facts. Let me jump back over here. So what's next on the on the agenda? Oh, we already did that one. Max Fletcher hit the portal. Who takes his place, <laughs> man? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so, okay. I mean, are we asking how do we feel about this guy? Hey, man, I'm just reporting the news, man. Max, yes. Max, Max Fletcher hit the portal. I mean, Box, how you feel about that? After that dude kicked them two <laughs> points, I was already sold. Nah, Max Fletcher is the punter. Him. Yeah, he's the punter. Yeah, after Bell kicked them two points, sir, I was already sold because that last one, like, dang, you see that? Yeah, that time was a. He, he did. He didn't. He know he didn't have a job. After that, so good riddance. 
<laughs> Dude yeah, kicks that's 60 it. yards. He kicked 60. He kicked 60 yards against the win. <laughs> it was gusty out there the other day. Yeah. Um, I mean, Fletcher would kick a, a 50, 60 yarder and then come back and shank a punt. He was so super inconsistent, man. But whoever the punter was at the spring game, that whatever his name was, Dale, hey, that dude was man, solid. He was kicking that. Yeah, he was kicking that. He thing. was solid. Yeah. So I don't I don't think we're gonna miss him too much, but hey, you know, we appreciate your service, sir. We appreciate uh, now, it. Hey man. Hey, uh uh don't forget to leave them. Uh, you can have a jersey. Take it with you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we need that because the way the way the kickers, the the kicker was kicking, we need somebody <laughs> that we can that we can that we can be proud of. Cause them kickers suck. They were terrible. No, nah, they'll be I mean, hopefully, I mean this dude from from um, Hawaii can get it together, man. Um, but he's his leg looks super weak, super weak. But you Some know, two kickers just let us know how really, 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 really good Cam Little was. Yeah, yeah, he was special. Yeah, yeah. you can tell that he was going to be kicking on Sundays. Shout out to Devin uh, Jason Crawford on Twitter, man. He said Devin Bell is the new punter. Yeah, Devin Bell. I can't remember his name off the top of my head. So we'll take him. We'll yeah. take him. We ain't gonna. We you know when the last time we cared about a punter? Yeah, and, really. And we don't care about the punter until he kick it out of bounds. Like what is you doing? <laughs> I know, right? You got one until job. You shank one. Who is yeah. who, who? Who is that dude? <laughs> kick the dang ball. Man, I you know it's always that I could have kicked the better, I could kick it further than that. Man, hey. bro, this dude is a field flipper. He he, he will yeah. flip the field back. That's what that's what he is. I'm with that. Yeah. Well, man, jumping over into some uh, some basketball news, man. You know, rumor is that we that we got a chance of flipping this guy who was a. Uh, Entertaining Kentucky, but now they talking about he coming to the Hogs. But I got this is a two part question. You think we got a chance to get this guy, and why are we moving so slow with bringing in people at this point? He been on he been on the job for a week. We only got one person. Why why are we moving so slow? That's my second part of my question. Mm. Hmm. I'm sure that they're probably talking to a lot of people. I I mean, it's I don't I didn't expect a mass exodus from other schools, but I I think there's going to get to a point because if there's just a mass exodus, that means he's not really vetting them. So, when you got to pick of the litter, I think you have you you have the opportunity to be patient. As long as this window is open now, I can look, okay, who in the portal? Oh, this dude want to come holler at it. Well, okay, what he got? What what's the dude down here got? So he has time to be patient. So I ain't I ain't tripping that he ain't got but one. He know this dude right here is a legitimate big man. He's the stretch three. I mean the stretch four or five, and he know what he, you know that he he's a good uh, player. So boom, give me Big Z. I'm gonna build around him. So be patient. I think. I like the patience because we seen how quick Musk pulled a trigger. He put a trigger on people that the first person say yes. Till he got full, then he ain't got to worry about it. Plus, you got a lot of these schools throwing a lot of money around. When you throw a lot of money around, that going to open people's eyes and minds. So we already know Carter Knox coming. He coming. His daddy coached for him. His daddy played for him. He coming. We already know the sick the Simba or whatever his name is, the center coming. Mm-hmm. Which one? Yeah. The guy the is guy it, from not the from number one. Arizona? Or the no, guy from he, uh, Oklahoma no, State? He, no, I'm talking about the, just talking about the recruits. Okay. Not gotcha. that Jay Quan, not that Jay, whatever his name is, not him. Because he he very well could go to Missouri. I'm talking about the dude, the other center they had in they in they um they recruits. Mm-hmm. He coming. Ain't got nowhere else to go. So if they can get Lim, 
they because the mother guys they look they they there's a lot of schools throwing money at them right now. So when you throw money at somebody, Coach Cal got to re re recruit them. And so I mm-hmm. think, but he ain't he ain't, he don't go at that hundred mile by hour pace like Musk did last year. We had when I mean, Musk was getting people with the first five days. He didn't try to he didn't he he didn't waste no time. Now mm-hmm. we see that was the wrong thing to do. <clears throat> Cal is picking. Cal is taking his time, which that's what you got to do to make sure you get the right players to build a team. Because mm-hmm. I mean, you can't just go off of a lot of times film. I think he wants to talk to these guys, uh, these these guys. And make sure, you know, maybe mentally they're on the right level and say the right things. And so that's what I'm banking on because I understand that Coach Cal has he he rejuvenated. He got a bone to pick. He really does. He got a bone to pick. How how dare, you know, these Kentucky fans <clears throat> excuse me, how, how dare these Kentucky fans, you know, say I'm washed. Really? That's what we're doing? Oh, okay. I, I gave y'all 38 uh, um, NBA drafts. Okay, I only won one championship. Guess what? So that rejuvenated him. So he's doing the best. I'm thinking he's probably picking these players. Probably He's probably more being more scrutiny, uh, scrutinizing these players probably more than any player he's ever picked. Okay. All right. What, what, y'all, think? what y'all think about? You ain't answering the question. Man, I wish we would have somebody there other than Big Z. I would like to have at least two players. Maybe, I mean, yeah, I, I think I just personally think it's moving a little slow. I'm kind of it makes me nervous that I only have one person on the team at this point. And if mm. you ain't counting the walk on, you know, if you count him, we got two. So, I mean, I need I need some movement, man. I want to see something. I'll give me something. To be excited about. That's what I want. Mm. So that one player is a well, I mean, heck of a start. That one player is a heck of a start, though. But see, that's no, I don't understand. He ain't no chop liver. To my yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he's a good player. But the deal is, is that I mean that's what's wrong with our what are you society. Do pick and roll by itself, bro. But that's <laughs> what I'm saying. That's what's wrong with our society. We want to. You right now, Oliver, have found something to be disgruntled about. You want to be happy right now in April. Right. You see what I'm saying? Right. Come on, bro. Mm-hmm. I mean, how? <laughs> how? I, I, you know, that don't even make no sense. Make that hey. make sense to me. You want hey, you want me. a brand new coach to make you happy in April. Hey, I'm trying to get some recruits in here, man. That's all I'm talking about. See what I mean? You can't even explain that. He I can't even explain. explain it. I don't care. This is oh. the barbershop. I ain't got to explain myself. Bro, yeah, well, bro. hey, well, <laughs> well, hey well, everybody here going to see how dumb that sound. You know big, they, cold-blooded it, dummy. You want to be everybody, happy Everybody want the same thing, man. I don't care what y'all say, but let me ask <laughs> y'all this, though. OD, OD, wait a minute. Since they got Kenny Payne, you're going to start seeing some recruits so you can be happy. Kenny Payne, that boy... We ain't even, no, I'm gonna you, get on. You, we gonna get on him later. We gonna get on him that. later. Yeah, okay. What about y- what y'all think about these this guy's stats, man? Couple, I had to leave some of them off. What y'all think about that? Mm-hmm. Three point percentage. It ain't on here, but he shot thirty four percent from from three on paper. Yeah, on paper, he that six looks five. great. Six five. Ugh. Yeah, but that's a twenty three. Six five is a big two guard. Mm-hmm. That's what he play. Yeah. I'm just asking you what you think about him. What y'all think about his I, stats? I think them stats pretty good. Yeah. What's wrong Do with you? him? No, yeah. I'm What's just curious. I think he needs it's to tighten up on the free throws. Sixty three percent from the free throw line. I ain't no setup. I was just curious what y'all thought about it. Oh, okay. I know how I you do. Right, I know how I your mind right, work. I think with the right point guard around him, that's <clears> the them great stats. Yeah. This your boy Big Z, y'all was talking about. Yeah. Five points a game, fifty-seven percent, three point three from. But he rebounds. didn't play that many games, though. He didn't play that many games. I think I'm he only just, played eleven I, minutes con- uh, collectively. I'm just reporting the facts, man. I, I don't yes. know what he did. I, 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 I didn't. I, I'm how telling you, the yeah. games you watch, bro. And I'm telling you the facts about this because I, I looked at that too, and he's got some games where he had eighteen points and. 
Uh, he, but he didn't play that much, is what I'm saying. I think he only played like 11 minutes. The 57 cent looked good, though. Mm. And they yeah. some blocks. Yeah, it looks good. All right. That's good for a player to just, that's, that's good for a player to just start playing in January. He had three months. Okay. I got you. I, I've decided just, that O O wants to be the villain tonight. I can, I've no, already no villain. Decided I'm just that, asking questions. I'm I, just throwing I, them I, out I, there. <laughs> yeah, I, I've decided that. Oh, whatever it is, O D going against it. Man, let me read my super chats, man. See, yeah, I he's not ready. Read my super chats, man. <laughs> hey, shout out to David Dillon, man. He says, Fellas, "Yo, yo, yo, it was great at the meet. Hello, it was great at the meet, y'all before the spring yeah. game. It was great to meet y'all before the spring game." Okay. Probably. Uh, can't believe my boy told y'all he wasn't subscribed. Oh, I remember. <laughs> we fixed that, Wolf Pig. Hey, man, I appreciate you, man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I remember them. <laughs> that was funny, man. Thank you for yeah, that, man. was like, I ain't subscribed? What? <laughs> <laughs> hey, shout out, to, shout out to Jeremiah, man. Thanks for supporting the channel, man. Yo, yo. He said, he said all them times Fletcher kicked 25-yard punts last season, it was embarrassing last season. Bruh. Thanks. That's a fact right there, man. Man. Jeremiah hit us with another one. Yes, sir. Hold up. There we go. Give Cal some time. He has to prove he can put good teams together for how many seasons? Give him time. Be patient. Mm. Yeah. That's what okay. I told OG, man. We'll, we'll, Be we'll patient, we'll, young we'll grasshopper. We'll Let's walk one. down. Let's walk down the hill. And get them all, you know. Let's don't run down the hill. Man, hey, <laughs> Steam, Steam Donkey 56 says, this is an entertaining podcast, but not very accurate. Go to Mr. Barbershop, what go you talking the, about? Said, did he say? Go to Natty Sports if you don't like it. <laughs> hey, <laughs> this is the Barbershop. Hey, we, we, yeah. we accurate when we need to be accurate. Wins hey, and man. losses. That's what we <laughs> accurate about. Can you believe this guy? <laughs> Come to the barbershop. Hey man, what kind of, you you try to get yourself a fade? That's what you right. try to get. You try to get faded hey. up. <laughs> hey, I'm gonna call I'm, I'm gonna call Char I'm gonna call Charlemagne God to get him the donkey the other day. <laughs> man, what is this dude talking about? It's the barbershop. I can guarantee you he's never been in one. Right. Because there ain't nobody accurate at the barbershop. We just talking hey, about it. Talking we don't care about, about being accurate. We care we'll make about it sound good. Yeah, we're gonna make it sound good. But it's the barbershop. That's what happens at the barbershop, man. Yeah, but it's at the barbershop. Man, let's let's jump into a little football, a little football action. Mm. I don't know if y'all seen this dude right here, man. He he's a beast, man. And I don't know if Arkansas reached out to him, but I was like, I would love to have him on the team, man. CJ West out of Kent State. Uh man, let me I think I got his uh got his info here. He's a big boy, man. He had 40 Ooh. tackles last year. Hey, this for you, Steam Donkey 56. You say we ain't accurate. Here you go. You can look it up. Yeah. It's verified. Ooh. 40 tackles. Yeah. He had seven tackles that? for loss, two sacks. He weighed 315 pounds, 6'2". We need That's that boy on the, the D-line. And like those, ladies most. and gentlemen, they're the facts. I like that the most. He's 6'2", so he ain't small. He ain't small as 315. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm like, we need to go, we need to go get this boy, man. So that's I, I I really was like, hey, we need to go get this guy. But there's some some cats that we reached out to. Let me pull uh DZ's information up, even though he ain't here, he's definitely contributing. That's for sure. Shout out to Wu Pig DZ one time. Shout out to D. Yeah. All right, so. On here, we got football targets, possible football targets. We got a wide receiver named Riley from Nevada. That boy always knocking that cup over. Hey, man. <laughs> On the show. It was, <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> People know about my cup. Uh, So he emerges as one of the top wide receivers. Um. Over his three-year career at ULM, last year he had 24 catches, two touchdowns, at 400 yards. Eh. Man, there's a bunch of dudes on here that I'm not really sure about. Keenan Brown. 
out of a uh, he's a wide receiver, five hundred and nine yards, twenty five catches. Uh, we got a center. Well, we're trying to get these guys. We got a center from Utah. We're trying to get. Played eleven games last year. Started the last eight at center. We could use him. We could use a center. I don't know he's even better than the one we got, but the one we got, he suspect. Mm-mm. He suspect. Who else we got on this list, man? Uh, the rest of them basketball guys that we've contacted: Carter Knox, Kobe Bria, Aiden Mahaney. Man, these some, some man these names, bro. Jeremy Roach, <laughs> the Duke transfer. Did he did he uh commit somewhere? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's a few of the names out there on the basketball and recruiting trail. Uh, but man, I hope Arkansas reaches out to this big guy right here. We need somebody like this. Before we move on to the next part of the show, I need y'all to do me a favor. Make sure that you hit that like button. Hit the like we got, button. We got three hundred and eighty nine people in the building. Go ahead and hit that like button. We need it. We need 17 likes to get to the 100. You know how we like to do. So go go ahead and hit that like button for your boys, man. We would definitely appreciate it. Uh so let me run run up to hit a super chat. I think I got one of those. Uh let's see here. Old Smiles Outdoors. Hey man, he hit us up with the super chat. And all he said was outdoors. He outdoors. He liked to be outside. He outside with it. <laughs> hey man, thank yes, you for supporting the channel. We appreciate man, you. Man, appreciate it. Keep the lights on, man. I appreciate you, man. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, now, man, we just hired somebody. They had time to put his pitch up there, but we just hired Kenny Payne as Kenny the Payne, uh, man. associate head coach. He coached Louisville at his last stop. For a couple of years, he was 12 and 52. Hit that big trash for me, uh, G. Mm, super trash. <laughs> <laughs> this, Box, you had something to say about Kenny Payne. Yeah. Come on, Box. Let's hear it. Let's hear I it. Think, I think Kenny Payne was just as big a hire as any five-star we can get. Why you say because a lot of time coaches is not a head coach material, but they is a great assistant coach, and he mm-hmm. can recruit, he can coach, and during Calipari heydays at Kentucky, he was right in the mix of all of that. Hmm. I I kind of well I I kind of feel like box about him because here's the deal. He is. Kind of like Box saying, not really a head coach. When I think about his head coaching style or his head coaching numbers or something like that, okay, yeah, a little bit lackluster. But I'm thinking, okay, maybe he just couldn't get the kids to buy into it. But he's he's great at this area right here. So for him to step down from a head coaching position to a to a an assistant coach like that. Man, that's got to be huge to have, you know, he building a dream team. Everybody everybody can't be the one guard. Somebody got to be the two. So is that a good two guard? Mm-hmm. Well, he definitely got a lot of experience. I'll say that. Um, yeah. And, and, you know, I agree with Box that, hey, sometimes, you know, he, he just may have a specialty. He may not be a great head coach, but. That doesn't mean that he's not a good coach. And we gonna mm-hmm. I'm sure Cal wouldn't bring him here or bring him back because he did coach under Cal at Kentucky. Um he's coached the Knicks. Man, he's he's been somewhere everywhere. Uh so with all the years of coaching, man, he got the experience. So I ain't gonna knock it. I'm with it. I am with it. So that's that's a, any y'all got anything else you wanna add about uh Mr. Kenny Payne? Welcome to the Hogs, by the way. Yeah, welcome to the Razor. He passed up jobs to come here. It ain't like this was his only opportunity. He passed up stuff to come to Arkansas. Mm-hmm. You're right. 
Um, so, G, you had something that you wanted to talk about, the uh, Arkansas Sports <laughs> Hall of Fame coming? Yes. Uh, <clears throat> tomorrow is the Arkansas Sports Hall of Fame banquet at the State House Convention Center. And it's going to have three, uh, I'll say, I mean, it has some notable uh, football players that I'll bring out. I mean, Peyton Hillis will be inducted into the Arkansas Sports Hall of Fame. He was here from uh, 2004 to 2007. Um, he, the, let me see here. Overall, he had 2,000, uh, 2,150 yards from scrimmage with uh, two t- uh, 23 touchdowns. He will be inducted uh, that night. Also, he went on to play for the Broncos, the Browns, and Kansas City, and the Giants. Uh, so shout out to uh, Peyton Hillis uh, for uh, getting inducted to the Arkansas Sports Hall of Fame. Also, Jason Peters. He was up on the hill from 2001 to 2003. Uh, he went on to be drafted by the Eagles, where he was a seven-time Pro Bowler, and he also won a national championship. He's also going to be inducted. And then one of uh, OD's favorite quarterbacks, Ryan Mallett, uh, who passed away this past June. He was up on the hill from 2007 to th- 2010, and the dude was a gunslinger. He was that was one of uh, Bobby Petrino's weapons right there. He had eight thousand uh, three hundred and eighty-five yards uh, all together um, at Arkansas. Uh, added eight hundred and nine, eight hundred nine. I mean. <laughs> 892 at uh, Michigan before he came here. So the dude was, uh, he was a phenomenal quarterback, but he went on and went to the Patriots and then the Texans and then the Ravens. So shout out to those three football players. They're going to be inducted tomorrow night right here in Little Rock uh, at the State House Convention Center. I want to say something about that. Um, What up? Even though Peyton Hillis is getting inducted tomorrow, what he did saving them kids is ten times yeah. better than what he's gonna proceed tomorrow. Yeah, he hey, put his life he. on the line to save kids, and one of them wasn't even his own kid. That he went and got first. You yeah. know how hard it is to pass your kid up to go get somebody else kid first. That right there to him is is by far his biggest achievement in life. That's that's facts. That is facts, yeah. man. I'm glad I'm just glad he was here to tell the story. But while we got a little second, I'm gonna do the reads that I do have. You about ready to open it up for the hog pen? I just sent you the thing. I need you to post the link for some reason. I can't post it, so I just sent that to you. Uh but yeah, you got the reads, I'm gonna let you go ahead and get it, man. We're gonna shout out our sponsors. Well, I don't have the last one, but I'll do the first I got two. It. Don't worry about it. Appreciate you, Woo Pig family. What we want you to do is experience peace of mind with Insurance Max. They are your one-stop shop for home, auto, commercial, insurance, and we're talking about statewide. So don't wait. Call today for your free, no obligation quote. Secure your future with Insurance Max. It's where protection meets affordability. So call Caleb, uh, Wes, or Sandy, and you can start to safeguard what matters the most. That number is 870-534-2823. Again, that number is 870-534-2823. And you know we always going to show some love to the OGs. That's 3M Electric. They are an electrical contractor serving Northwest Arkansas, and they do both uh, residential and commercial electrical contracting. These guys are an SDVOSB. That is a service disabled veteran owned small uh, business. These guys are both reliable and dependable, and no job is too big or too small. So when it comes to all of your electrical needs, hey, give 3M Electric a call. That number is 479 408 9865. Again, that number is 479-408-9865. And when you talk to our sponsors, yo, let them know that the boys over here at the Woo Pig Podcast sent you. Oh, 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 my God. They got something special for you. Yeah. 
You muted, bro. You know, we got to send out another special uh, shout out to a sponsor. Uh, we got Remax Platinum, man. They're our new sponsor serving Central and South Arkansas. Uh, hey, if you're looking to find your dream home or sell a property hassle free, hey, look no further than Remax Platinum, where client satisfaction is their top priority. Whether you're buying, selling, or investing, Melody and her team, they got you taken care of. With your real estate journey, make it smooth and successful and seamless. If you're ready to take that next step, contact Melody 501 366 4407 and let Remax Platinum turn your real estate dreams into reality. Hey, man, don't wait. Hit them up today. They're going to get you taken care of. Now, Jumping over here. Uh, I couldn't. You can't post it? Yeah. Hold on just a second. Well, we, I'm about to post it real, real quick. We're about to open it up to the hall pen. Give me a quick second here. I got to jump on the iPad to do it. Because it yeah. won't let me be great. Yeah, I don't know why it does that. You should have sent it to. Uh, there we go. I just posted it. So oh, okay, there is the link. So whenever you that guys ready to jump in shit. and kick it with us, until then we're gonna take a look at some of the comments, uh, <laughs> and, and see what we got here. I think I got a couple super chats I ain't read. Let me read them. See, we got how wow. You, I'm saying that's YouTube. Hey, Taylor Green, Randall Cunningham, 2.0. Hey, if he is, mm -hmm. I'm well, with that's it. That's yeah. I am with it. So I, I ain't mad at that comparison whatsoever. I think he may be even faster than Randall Cunningham. That boy got some wheels on him. That's facts. Yep. Jeremiah, man, hit us with another super chat, man. He said RIP to Ryan Mallet, man. Man, yes, sir. Man, thank y'all for supporting the channel, man. We appreciate it. Yeah. Man, that joint. So ain't nobody going to come up and kick it today? Okay, all right. All right, Watch you, all right. You muted. All right. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so what I want you guys to do for me, uh, if you haven't done so, if you're in the building, man, make sure you go ahead and hit that like button so we can make sure we continue to run up that algorithm uh so they can know that we hey we doing good things over here even though like uh the roach man said that we ain't very accurate so he say, <laughs> so he say <laughs> we, we are entertaining hey this, this the barber shop <laughs> but hey, hey so this one about green before you go further I, I i like his potential he looked good he was playing against the second string. The week before that, he threw four interceptions against the first string. So mm. I'm going to hold my thoughts on him until we play Oklahoma State. Because we already know they're going to do it against, against um, UAPB. You can't yeah. throw four interceptions the week before, and all of a sudden you look awesome the, the next week. So mm. he looked good. Every Arkansas starting quarterback looked good during spring practice. Every one of them. We ain't heard not one spring practice. Well, no starting quarterback from Arkansas look good. Didn't look good. They like trash on the season. So <laughs> I want to see what he do against Oklahoma State against their first string defense. That's what I want to see. Mm. Cause just a week before, he throw four interceptions. Box out here shooting shots, man. He he's saying not so fast. Not so fast on all the tailing green love. Is is that what is that what I'm hearing, Box? That would you slow down a little bit. If he and now, if he had a play against the first string defense and did that mm -hmm. right there, I'd be like, man, this dude right here is it. Mm -hmm. He did look good. So you he think they fluffed the, the numbers string the whole game? So you think they fluffed the numbers a little bit? I mean, you throw four interceptions the week before that. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. So they they fluffed the numbers you, a little bit. You didn't throw none in, in the official game. Yeah, okay. that's what I think. Hmm. Mm. Well, well man, I guess we, I mean, go ahead. We're going to find out. We're going to find out what it's yeah. like. 
Uh, I was on the Twitter space today with uh, in the pod with J Rod. If you don't, if you don't know who that is, follow him on Twitter. He's probably in the comments somewhere. Uh, but definitely, uh, we had, follow him. I had a good conversation with him uh, and, and a couple of guys on this Twitter space. Uh, and, and the conversation was around uh, Sam Pittman. Uh, and with the influx of money being given to John Calipari, they were talking about, well, a lot of people on Twitter talking about, you know, getting rid of Sam Pittman and bringing in a comparable coach of Calipari's stature on the football side. Mm. Uh, his argument was embracing what we have as a fan base today, uh, embracing the hog and supporting what's here now. I want to get you, you guys, I want to get y'all take on this right here. Do you think everybody that's saying let's, let's do the same for football that we did for basketball that they're just tired of seeing Sam Pittman. Mm. Box. It's just sad because during the um, press conference, he named all of these t- sports except the football team. He left Sam out. Ollie, say that. Well, he one could, more, say hey, that one more time. During the press conference, he named every ranked. Sports team that we got, which is everything on the hill, mm-hmm. except the football team. He could have even said, look, um, our football team is going to be ranked this year. He didn't say that. And so, and the, and the fact that everybody is putting all their money in the football, they won't see him gone. Because I promise you, if Bob Petrino was the head coach, it wouldn't be that. Hmm. They be throwing money at football, just like they're doing basketball. Hmm. <clears throat> okay, for me, uh, hmm. I don't I, now exactly. What, I mean, make sure I answer like the right question. What's the question? One more time. Oh, <laughs> uh, so it was a long explanation, but bottom line is, hmm. people want. Sam Pittman to be mm. gone because of the influx of money being brought in for the basketball team. Gotcha. Uh, the The argument was based around embracing Sam in the co- coaching staff that we have here. Um, I wish J. Rod would come in here. I'm gonna text him and see if he can can jump on. But um, getting rid of Sam, bringing in somebody who can win. Most of the people want to get rid of Sam and bring in somebody else. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, is it comparable? I mean, what, what would be a comparable coach? You know, you're talking about hiring a comparable coach to a John Calipari, uh, Calipari hire. I mean, uh, who do you go get? I mean, you'd have to either pull somebody away from one of these schools that are just, just killing it or, you know, bring Nick Saban out of retirement. I mean, which is very highly unlikely. Everybody will be looking at you like, what is the wrong, what, what is the Arkansas doing? They out here losing their mind out here. Buy something like that. So I, I'm saying, why don't we just embrace what we have here? We do have the closest thing to one heck of a head coach, uh, Bobby Petrino, because we do have him at least running the offense. He is running the offense. I mean, that was where we really fell in love with Bobby Petrino is because when he was here before, he also was in control of that offense. So we know he's offensive minded. So guess what? That's I, I say if, if Sam Pittman gets fired next year, cool. Let's either make Bobby Petrino the next head coach, but that's just keep keep right on pushing. So that's how I feel about, um, you know, if we made the right decision or what, what should we do? That's how I feel about it. So, so before we come to you, Mo, J rod just popped in here. I'm going to let him properly explain his, his Twitter up, space Justin? today. What's up everybody. What's going on, man? So, little... so you you sound a little low. 
but we can we can make out what you're saying. I want you to to properly explain what we were talking about, or, well, what you were talking about in your Twitter space today. So basically, you know, right now I feel like we should embrace the hog because everybody is losing their mind thinking that we can go out here with Calipari the way we did Calipari and do the same thing for a coaching hire if to get rid of Sam Pittman. Like who are the realistic coaching hires out there that could come in and replicate the same amount of success that Calipari could have? Like who's a real who's a realistic candidate that would want to come to Arkansas right now and replicate that same type of success Bob Petrino there we go like, that's I, it. I think that's the <clears throat> universal name that everybody throws out yeah that's it and right now I, I, the other point that I was making is people are hoping for failure they are hoping Sam Pittman fails so that we can get Bobby Petrino you know, they're not giving Sam Pittman any credit for anything he has done. They're just knocking him down for the things that went wrong. You know, they they knock the 22 season because our secondary was so bad. But why was it so bad? Injuries. Our favorite guy, McAdoo, requested, asked to come be a DB because we didn't have any to come and sub out. That's a fact. It wasn't Sam Pittman's fault that players got injured. That's just what happened. You know, last year was a huge mistake for him, and he knows it. He went and got a comfortable hire because he was put in a bad situation with Kendall Bryles just jumping shop like he did. And he made the wrong move, but it was a comfortable move in his eyes getting Danny Nos because he had coached with him before. But let's give him credit for Travis Williams, Marcus Woodson, Deron Wilson, that defense that really made a lot of strides, even though they had to deal with an offense that was not helping them whatsoever. So right now, I feel like we just need to embrace the hog and embrace what we have going on because as much as everybody's saying that Bobby Petrion should be the head coach, that says that he is probably going to have success as the OC. So let's, let's embrace that right now. Let's embrace the fact that Sam Pittman is sitting over there doing exactly what everybody wanted him to do, working with the offensive line. Everything about it is him over there at the offensive line. That's what everybody asked for, and that is exactly what he's doing. He's giving Bobby Petrino that offense to work with. So right now, let's embrace what we got going on. I'm not sunshine pumping for Sam Pittman because if it doesn't go right, Hey, it's fifth year. Hey, you got to go, homie. But right now, let's embrace what we got and, and, and support <clears throat> these hogs. Because hey, they let me want say this support. For, let me say this for Mogo. I'm going to say it real quick. Let me explain something to you. No booster won't. We can, we can support Arkansas, which we do. We're going to support Sam Pippen this year. No booster won't Sam Pippen now. If the boosters don't want you there, you ain't getting no money, bro. You see how much you see how they just started giving money to, to Calipari and they give it to Musk? The boosters want who they want. Now, if Pippen was the head coach and Patrina was the head coach, they will be doing the same thing with him. He ain't no head coach. He proved that this year. Yeah. I don't know what part of I don't know what part of that that everybody don't understand. Yeah, we're gonna support the Arkansas because we raise the backs. That's what we do. Good or the good or the bad. Good through the bad. He ain't no head coach. He don't deserve that Arkansas job because a lot of his coaching abilities shoot, last year shot lost G. us games. Shoot the shot, G. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mo. We go. <laughs> hey, Justin, I thank you, man. Don't go nowhere. I just want to thank, uh, thank you for coming on, man, and explaining that better than I could because I couldn't. You know how when somebody else tell your story, it's all jacked up. When they that, that's what that's what happened. But I appreciate you coming on. <laughs> hey, Mo. He said that's what had happened. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey man, how was Jamaica, bro? Bro, yeah man, that's all I. <laughs> yeah man, pick up your cellar. 
Hey, it was great, man. I loved it, bro. We had a good time, man. Celebrate my uh, mother-in-law's 70th birthday. I was out there for a whole week, man. I feel like I've been gone for a year in YouTube land, man. When you get rolling, you got to get back in that cockpit and get it going again, man. I had to jump on here with y'all boys tonight, man. Real good conversation going. Man, is that a DZ doppelganger right there? <laughs> <laughs> Nah, man. <laughs> Yo, hey, but you know, some you know another question that that Hello, someone G. asked me. Hello, G. You didn't let this that? man finish his comment, man. Hold on, we gotta let Ooh. him cook for a minute. Mo didn't get a chance to say what he was about to oh, say. No. My bad. You good, G? Let me go ahead and get into it. But hey, I'll say this: I don't think that we're praying on Sam Pittman's downfall. I think we're preparing for Sam Pittman's downfall, for the simple mm. fact that if this does go right. There's going to come a time where how much of this is going to be because of the assistant coaches on staff versus Sam Pittman as a head coach, because most of the success that Sam Pittman had was while Barry Odom was there. That third year when Barry Odom knew he was leaving, that's when everything went to went down the down the crap shoot, if you will. You know what I'm saying? He had one foot in and one foot out because that first two years he was holding Sam Pittman's hand. That third year, he was like, hey, Sam, you, you got to do this on your own, bro. And we see exactly what happened. I don't think that we as a fan base are saying that we want Sam Pittman to fail, but we now know that boosters will pay for who they want. You know what I'm saying? That's hands down. If you're throwing that type of money and that type of NIL at Calipari, what makes you think they won't do that for a coach, a real football coach? Like if they if they go get a coach – that they really, really want. And I believe, I'm starting to believe that that Gus Malzahn smoke was real. Because for a while they were talking about they wanted to go get Gus Malzahn from UCF, but they didn't, some certain people didn't want him. But there was a certain booster that was willing to pay that bread. But I will say this. Right now, Sam Pittman has the opportunity to stay at this program for another three to five years. Or he can be fired within the first three to five games. That's mm. that's on that that's gonna be on Bobby Petrino right there. That's gonna be on mm. this hire. If this offense gels the way it's supposed to, Sam Pittman can either be here for three to five more years or three to five more games. Mm. Ooh. All right, hey, all right. Hey man, I'm gonna shout my I'm gonna shout my guy uh Kyle from Kyle from Kyle Scout Report. If you ain't checked him out, make sure you you tap into his YouTube page. Man, he do good work over there talking about these hogs. Yeah. Hey, what's going on, bro? How you doing tonight? Man, I'm good. I'm good. How y'all doing? Man, man we, we doing good. good, man. Man, so so did you want to lend your, lend your thoughts to this topic, or you got something else you want to cook on? No, nah, no. Nah, go ahead. Throw it at me. Throw it at me. What we, what we talking about? Throw it at me. So, Justin, go ahead and explain it one more time. The short version. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Form it in a question, not not a uh, essay. <laughs> that was long. Uh, basically, you know, I feel like that. Do you feel that we should embrace what we got, what we have as a staff right now, and everything? And vices, I mean, versus uh, hoping that it fails so that we can replace and have to rebuild again. Man, I 100% think we need to appreciate what we have. You know what I'm saying? Um, like Buddy up at the corner was saying earlier, Pittman did had his best times when he had a head, a previous head coach with him, with Barry Odom. You know, we got Bobby P back now. I mean, there's no need in us trying to, you know, tear it all down and just let it get thrown away. Why not keep the piece of the piece of the puzzle together? Like how much longer does Bobby have anyway to be a head coach? You know what I'm saying? Sam, Sam Pittman a little bit younger, you know, not by much, but he's a little bit younger. So why not go ahead and let him learn as much as he can with Bobby P as he did with Barry. And uh, let's just keep the shit rolling, man. I mean, I don't see no needing us trying to pray for his downfall. Man, let's rock with him. I mean, he 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 here. He a uh, guru on the o offensive line. I mean, players want to play for him. So I mean, I say we just rock with what we got and let's keep going with it. Mm. That's a good take. Wes? So Wes, 
Hey man, what's up? Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, we hear you. Yeah. Okay, cool. I'm I'm kind of I have mixed emotions on on the situation with Pittman and what um, the guy was saying about supporting the Hogs because here's here's my one side is I've been going to the game since Danny Ford was the coach and all those years when I was young and coming up all we did was root for the Razorbacks no matter what and we spent all this money time effort into going to those games even when we suck but now that I've gotten older my expectations have changed and it's hard for me to drink the Kool-Aid until they show me something because last year was a big hype train all they did was talk about KJ and Rocket returning we knew we had a pretty decent defense and then we go to the games and then what happens we saw we all saw what happened so that's that's one side of the, the story. I, I do believe they, you know, the university says things like, you need to donate to Edge, you need to do this, you need to do that. But in the same sense, where, where do we get the return? And the return is a good product on the football field. And that's not what we see a lot at Arkansas. Let's just be real. We're not, we're not up there with the LSUs of the world. And, and right now, we're not even competing with the Missouris. I mean, who would have thought that? We can't even compete with Missouri right now. So that that's one side of the coin for me. But on the positive side, I think Sam Pittman is right where he needs to be this year from uh, all the practice footage I've seen. He's coaching the offensive line. That's his specialty. That's what he knows, and that's where he needs to be. And he needs to leave Bobby Petrino and Coach Travis alone and let them do what they do. So mm. I kind of have mixed emotions, and, and I feel like this, if, uh, if, they, if they don't get it right this year, we know Pittman's going to be fired. And the natural selection is to just put Bobby Petrino in that spot and let him at least try to get us on the right track, just like Eric Musselman did with the basketball team. And another thing, I mean, honestly, if Sam gets fired and we take Petrino, that coaching staff's going to stay. Hey, your mic is muted, though, D. All right. Hold on one second, Justin. Before we come back to you, we got to go down the line. We got Unbiased, who uh, had us looking at his Walmart shark. <laughs> What's going on, man? That the buggy. That the buggy in the car. <laughs> I, I, I would talk about some of the other stuff earlier, but I'm going to leave that alone as basketball since we talk about this football stuff. But people talk about, hey, we want to fire Pittman so we can get another coach. Listen, we've already crossed that train. If we was going to fire Pittman, well, it should have happened last year. So we're in a whole nother season. The season's got to play out. All this clamoring for him to be gone. I want him to do well. I want him to have a successful season and he can keep his job. Why? Because if we win, it's good for us. Continuity. Exactly. It's, 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 it's not said and done yet. I, I think I think everybody jumping out the window for no doggone reason. <laughs> and OD need to be patient about these recruits. This ain't the must era. This ain't man. this ain't grab every guy. This ain't grab every guy. Man, tell him, tell him. <laughs> man, OD a sucker, man. <laughs> Twitter fan base losing their mind. We well, got no recruits. Here. What's going on? What's Bro, going on? Oh, dear, man. sucker, man. Hey, hey man. I am we, a hey, fan. We, How many times we I gonna tell walk you this? down in here? Hey, man, we I'm gonna walk down the hill, bro. I I want to. Hey, I want to be waking up in the morning, and be like, hey, we got a new recruit. Who that is? Nah, I, that's what I want. I'm ready to get it. I'm ready to get it, man. Hey, man. Just slow down, man. Slow down. Slow hey, down. man. No patience, man. Hey. No, hey, hey, but uh, so I, I had kind of a sidebar question to that. Someone, you know, I was, you know, texting with someone and they asked the question of this. So I'm going to pose it to the panel. If Sam Pittman fails, mm -hmm. doesn't Bobby Petrino fail? Mm -hmm. What what's that? Uh, uh, so. So that's the question. It. So let me go. You first. know what I'm saying? Let so me go O.D., first. Uh, before I say what I'm going to say, if you got a kid in the background, mute your mic if you're not talking. I don't know who that is, and I can't figure it out. 
But if you got a kid in the background, mute your mic if you're not talking. Okay, now, that's the reason I wanted to go first. But since I said that, I'm going to go ahead and go first. Uh, does Bobby fail if, if Sam Pittman fails? Kind of, sort of, technically, yes, he would. Uh, but if the offense saw, let's say they, they moved up 50, 50 spaces in offensive efficiency, uh, yards per game, quarterback play, all of that. Let's just say they did that. Who's going to get the credit for that? Bobby Petrino. The question is, would uh, Hunter Yurichek actually hire him as the coach? So to answer your question, yeah, technically if Sam fails, Bobby will fail. But can Bobby put up enough numbers to show that if I was the head coach, this is the trajectory that you would see this team? Mm. Mm. Mo, what I say you? Man. I'm gonna be real and say I don't think that it'll if Sam Pittman fails, Bobby Petrino will automatically fail. Because O D made a perfectly good point in saying that if the offense is markedly better, especially the O line, that'll be a win. Because we obviously see Sam Pittman Sam Pittman's failure is gonna gonna hinge on whether or not this team jails. Because from what I see based on what I've heard y'all say, because I didn't get a chance to see the spring game. I ain't even watched highlights yet. But from what I heard y'all saying last week, y'all are saying that Singleton didn't even get a chance. He didn't even get an opportunity to showcase any of his talent. So what I'm seeing is a mismanagement of personalities, and I'm also seeing a mismanagement of NIL money and talent on this team. That's a Sam Pittman problem. Bobby Petrino, mm. yeah, he can make – he can be the general and make the calls and say, this is who I want to play. This is who I want to start. But ultimately, Sam Pittman might have that pull and say, nah, we playing Taylor Green. So y'all figure it out. You know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, if, if this team fails, it'll be a Sam Pittman problem because we don't know what their defense is really looking like. We, we, I mean, y'all even said it. They had some holes. They had some, so the, they, they were kind of – So the answer to your to, – so the question, just to stay on the question – if, okay. if 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 Sam Pittman fails, does Bobby Petrino fail? Short answer, no. All right. Box. I say no because Origin was an assistant coach at LSU and he came back and won the championship. Sometimes so, sometimes the head yeah. sometimes, even though you're the assistant coach, you still gotta listen to the head coach. So I say no. Okay. So, Justin. Easy no. Oh, man. <laughs> like, it's been explained. Like, there, there's no more explanation to be needed. It's, it's, it's an easy no because, just like OD said, if we move up spots on the offense, like, it, it's, there's the possibility of doing that's not a failure on Petrino. Yeah. Hey, man, we're getting some feedback from your uh, – from your mic or something, man. It's mute, mute yourself. Uh, it's, well, I mean, yeah. it's like uh, if, when you're, if y'all look at the interview chat, you'll see I'm actually talking to y'all. So you'll see I'm telling. I already know who got the feedback issue, so I already let them know to mute that I muted them. Uh, it could be that he chose the wrong mic when he called in. He didn't choose his actual regular yeah. mic, so that probably is yeah. the issue. All right, Kyle. All right, my man's right here. All right, so me, mine is um real quick, real brief. It's um, I'm I'm yes and no. The reason I'm I'm a yes is because as Sam Pittman said, he letting the offensive coordinator run the offense and the defensive coordinator run the defense. So Pittman, by doing that, Pittman is letting them do their thing. So if Pittman fails, does he fail? Yes, but then again, no, because Pittman is putting it all on the offensive coordinator and on the defensive coordinator. So is that Pittman failing? Yes, but then again, is it Pittman failing? No, because, hey, this is your job. So run the offense. This is your job. So run the defense. That's my take. Gotcha. Wes? 
My take is it depends on how the offense looks. If the offense doesn't look good, it's a failure. Because with that line of thinking, then you would have to say that Travis Woodson was a failure last year. Gotcha. I'm biased. Last year, Bobby Petrino was the coach at Texas A&M Officer Coordinator. Once the season ended, was the coach fired? No. That was a question. Everybody, the coach, okay, so the coach was fired, oh. and Bobby Petrino was let go as well, correct? So if the season yeah. is a failure, it's a failure for him too, because guess what? I don't know why everybody got to be thinking that, oh, they're going to fire Pittman and hire Petrino. If this season's a failure, they both gone. Mark my words. They both gone. Mark so your this words. Is, this not a, oh, it's, it's, not, it's not a yes and no. It's simple as this. He's a coach on the Arkansas staff. If they don't succeed, the staff is gone. End of story. So, yes. Mm. Okay. You know, my you, take you know on he, it is. He didn't use. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, Jay. I forgot. Go ahead. So my take on it is that everybody works for the head coach. He is like at the top of the little pyramid. When his head get cut off, everybody else die anyway. So everybody's looking for a job when he get fired. It's not a you know succession. So with that aspect of it, just by those you know variables. If Sam Pippen fails, then Bobby Petrino by default gets fired. Not directly. Now, can he apply for the job? Yes, but it's not a shoe in. So that's how I feel about that. He, I mean, if if it's, if 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 the head coach get fired, everybody get fired. Period. That's it. Bobby okay. Petrino was using Jimbo Fisher terminology on offense last year. It wasn't even his call all the way. That takes it. I got you, boss. It wasn't about that. It was about the fact that the coach got fired and he was going to. Same rules going to apply here. All right. Let me read my super chats uh, real quick. Let me jump over here. I, last one I had uh, was. Nah, that wasn't it. Hey, shout out Mama Armstrong for supporting the channel, man. She says, congrats on your new sponsor. It's up here from here. Thank you. We appreciate it, man. We appreciate our sponsors, oh, yeah. man, for Thank supporting you. the channel. Miss Armstrong. Yeah, we got old smiles hitting us up again. He says, there is money coming to football NIL. Sam is a great coach, and he wants to win at Arkansas. Mm. Ooh, let's, let's talk about that. I want to talk He's about that. I got one most. I got a. I got a. Couple more super chats, boss hog. I'm gonna get to you, big dog. So give me just a second, cause I want to ask. I want to ask this question, man. Let let me uh, let me go back. Y'all remember this? Matter of fact, I'm gonna throw it up there down on the bottom here in just a second. I want to know who in here. This is gonna be real short. Thinks that Sam Pittman is a great coach. I'm gonna, I'm gonna start mm, with I'll my boy first. Mo at the top. Oh, the hold up. We we gotta we gotta. Uh, <laughs> Box want to go first, so let him get it. I think what he should have did, he should have said Sam is a coach and wants to win because great is nowhere in Sam vocabulary unless you're talking about the offensive line. Okay. Mo? Nah. Sam Pittman is terrible, bro. Ooh, Short answer. Shoot the shot. Shoot the shot. Mm. <laughs> mm. <laughs> mm. I Terrible. said what I said. Mm. All right. Uh, Justin, is he a great coach? He's a good player. We can't hear you. Say it again. He's a good player. I said he's a good player. Yeah, coach great. that embraces the hall. But is he a good head coach? Uh, stand on business. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Look all right. Nobody says, say, hey, man, say what you say, man. Hey, man, say what you he say. He loves the whole players, but I, as a head coach, like I said earlier, all right, all right. like I said earlier, everybody has to be an offensive line coach, and that's what he's doing right now. And that's where he should stay. Hey, well, that's it then. 
All right. Calais, what you think, man? He a great position coach. He's an okay head coach. That's that. All right. Mm. Wes? I don't think he's even okay. I, I think he sucks. Thank you. Hey Wes, how do you really feel? You know, don't hide it. You know, just <laughs> man, it's crucial in here. Hey man, he uh, if he's great, I'm shot rough, ain't it? What's it bad? Is. What's bad? If he's great, what's bad? <clears throat> now we 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 got it. We go into unbiased. Unbiased is unbiased. always on the opposite side of the track. Telling y'all right now, he is always on the opposite side of the track. Give it to us, oh, Bias. He, he is a below average head coach and above average offensive line coach. Above average. There you go. Ah. Above average? Ooh. Offensive Ooh. line coach. Why above average? Offensive line coach. Below we average. Why, head why coach. above average? Because I mean, he's had some great offensive lines. Historically, he's yeah. done well as an offensive line coach. He also yeah, coached I mean, in that's, Georgia that's, where they get every NFL player through there. Yeah. So, I mean, did he not hey. recruit them there though. Yeah, he he was there for a couple of years. He was he got he got some recruits in. He recruited Joshua well, Brown, but good. then when he yeah, went got the head coach in the Arkansas job, he went to Florida and then he got brought him to Arkansas and we see what Joshua Brown do here at Arkansas. My question so, to y'all is, what great or good head coach struggles to call timeouts, struggles with when to call timeout? Barry Switzer. None of them. <laughs> Yo, y'all going to hey. let me answer the question? Go ahead, man. We we missed you, G. Never mind, man. I don't even care. That's how y'all going to do it before? <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, let, me, let me go back and read my super chats real quick, man. I got, I got a couple of more. Now my feelings hurt. I was going to say That's Sam Pittman is an excellent head coach. I'm thinking Sam Pittman should, ago. you know, win the uh, the Frank Broyles Award. That's what I was thinking. Y'all right. didn't want to hear that. <laughs> you got to be a sister. Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you're talking about, Bob. You're talking about, Bob. All right, so, man. Hey, shout out Boss Hall, man. We appreciate you supporting the channel, man. He says, Sam what can't boss recruit hole? is one of his biggest problems. The boosters don't want Sam. Fire Sam and get someone else. His winning record is off Chad Moore's players. Mm. Ooh. Mm. Can't knock man. Him. Can't knock mm. Bruh. He, he came back because he wants some more. with the wrecking ball. He wants some more smoke. He said players quit on Sam last year, and Sam doesn't. He he can't motivate players to play. Ooh, wait, he driving by with his wooden. Hey, Ricky. <laughs> <laughs> Ricky Duck, my boss hog linking at the window. <laughs> hey, shout out to boss hog man for uh supporting. Man, the channel, appreciate man. you, man. Fishman says drop Mello. Drop the link for Mello. Okay. Mello, we 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 gonna hit you up with the link, man. But Mello, you don't even talk football, man. Okay, but he dialing in anyway. <laughs> Who's that? He feel hey, Mello got to say, man. I go, can I give y'all a, a legit update on something real quick? Cause I gotta run back. Yeah, let's right, hear. It. Let's hear. It. Let's hear. It. Okay. Jaden uh, Quintessence is a player that we're in the hunt for, but. News is Louisville is not playing no games. They're hiring in one of his ex-coaches, and he's going to go visit Louisville Friday. So it's going to be a fight for him. Um, in regards to Knox, I think Knox is a short a a sure, a sure fit. Bogey Fland is definitely opening his recruitment up, but we do have the inside track with the relationship, but it's going to be a fight for him as well. Um, Richmond, I don't think it's going to be a fight. It's just going to be a little bit of a waiting period. You know, so OD, you know, just hold tight. They'll, they'll come. But the player that you mentioned, the Drea dude, I want him. That guy can shoot. He shoots 44% from three-point land. That is the guy I want. I need that guy to come here. 
I hope they are able to pull him out, pull, pull him off, and get him there. Who? Tiki. Um, Who? What was it? That, if, his last name was like Tria or something like that. I had to look at my my notes here. Are uh, you talking about? Yeah, you said his name. Kobe Bria. Earlier. Yeah, Kobe Bria. That's the name. Kobe Bria. That boy can shoot. Mm-hmm. He is a gunner. Yes. Yeah, he, he's a plug and play type Dayton. of guy. You just put him on the floor, create space, and he can shoot. That boy can shoot. Mm. That's the guy I want. Six, but I'm looking. Six, I'm looking at two hundred five pounds. Four the freshman. Yeah. He, he a six six guard, two hundred and five pounds, uh, from the Bronx, New York, but he plays for Dayton. So, mm. mm-hmm. we'll see. We'll see. He shoots forty four percent from three point land. Uh, He's a sharp shooter. On twenty four seven sports, they, I, they don't really have. Let me get back to it. I'm gonna get listen to you guys. All right, man. All right, I I'm have, biased. I'd rather have Liam Nelson. Who? Hey man, somebody just called as the false prophet, man. They be in the they be in the comments tripping, Leo. don't they? Huh. <laughs> man, you can't have your feelings out here, man. Hey, I don't care what that's they how I say. go down in the barber shop, man. It's, it's it's the barber shop, man. You you come in here, man. You might leave here with your feelings crushed. Your self esteem is is messed up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Thinking this everything gonna just be all right. <laughs> Melo, hey, what it do, baby? Man, what it do, man? Hey, that's all I want to say, man. I hate to break it to all y'all boys out here, man. Arkansas basketball school now, man. So y'all can hang all that football up. We ain't no good. Oh, you know? man. <laughs> so, hey, <laughs> hey, shoot the shot at Melo, man. Shoot the shot. It's a wrap, man. It's a wrap. Hey, we can't be up here crying all season about these boys, man. Get ready for basketball season, man. Hey, man. We got a long way to go Mello, for basketball. Let me let me ask you Hey, Melo, let me ask you a question. Do you think, so o, OD is in his feelings right now because we ain't just stacking recruits at the recruits at the recruits in the first, you know, three or four days. What, what, how do you feel about Calipari, since you're a basketball guy, how do you feel about him taking his time, being patient with this, uh, building this team? How do you feel about it? And, you know, with the hire of, of uh, Payne. I mean, I think pain, that's okay. That don't really mean nothing, you know what I'm saying? But as far as, like, the players, though, hey, Kyler Perry, oh, then you got to realize, man, Kyler Perry deal with a different caliber of player, you know what I'm saying, than, like, Musman was really getting, you know what I'm saying? He dealing with, like, the top player in the country in every position, like top one, top two, top three. So with them type of players, it take a longer time because you're dealing with millions, 500,000, you know what I'm saying? You're dealing with a lot. But Kyler Perry going to get it done. Look what he had at K- Kentucky. He gonna get it done every year, so you ain't gotta worry about no top players. He get he get it done every year, man. So just relax, get ready, man. So so it's so you you saying you need OD need to just be you know be a little bit more patient, right? Yeah, and don't and don't think we finna build around no big Z. Please, I, I got don't a, think that. I got a question for Melo, man. So Melo, you was a a huge man. Eric Musselman supporter. You was all man. What y'all talking about? Fire Eric Musselman. So, yeah, he was. but we ain't seen you since he got fired. Uh, y'all forgot so I, what he did. I, yeah. <laughs> so I'm assuming you happy with the fire? With, 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 we ain't seen you since he quit. My bad, not fired. But we ain't seen you since. So I'm assuming you happy with Calipari. Watch this. Watch it. Watch I was on here with Calipari. Watch, got him now. What you talking about? Go ahead. You was on. The, you was, no, he, was, he, was he was. He was on here that night when they got it now. Was yeah, he? Was, yeah, okay. he was on here that night. Hey, what you talking about? So I take uh, well, oh, well I, I, I still take it you happy with the with the with the whole situation now. I feel like Kyler Perry like one of the top three coaches, best coaches in the whole country, bro. That's how I feel like with must everybody like so to in order like to get Kyler Perry that was big for us. That was a splash. Yeah, he was like top three in the whole country to me. Okay, all right. Well, I got two things for Melo. I got I two agree. things, Melo. You need to go watch more basketball because Big Z ain't like you think he is. Number two. Okay. What Arkansas Big Z? can win hey, five okay, straight. Hey, listen, listen. I let you talk. Arkansas can win five straight national championships in basketball. Arkansas will still be a football state. 
Okay. We get that's we getting feedback think. from somebody. Hey, Jay, hey, mm. that's what. Hey, look, that's what you think. Jay Jones ain't coming saying nothing about putting on my money with nobody else on no football team. <laughs> you ain't seen Jay Jones talk about Arkansas football team. Like, come on, man. You talking about the basketball team. Bro, bro Eric, Jay Jones don't put too much money what in the football program. Fuck? We know you don't know nothing about football yeah, with your comments, we, so I'm going to leave it at that. No. <laughs> no. Uh-uh, Box. What about the NIL? Oh, hold on. Box, what you heard Jerry Jones say about the NIL, though? Yeah, I ain't think so. Just wait till we talk Jay about Jones basketball again. No I ain't going to – I ain't going to – Hey, bro. I ain't going to discuss nothing else with you about football. Period. <laughs> Uh, hey, we know Melo. We know Melo is a uh, is a basketball guy, man. Come on, give cut him some slack, man. Cut him some slack. Hey, what? Ty, we we getting feedback from you, what I mean, so man. I had to mute you. Hey, what what I miss? What he say? What Jerry Jones say about you missed the everything, NIL evidently. He said that. Don't worry about it, bro. Get I'm back in the comments and, and, and not holler you, not you, Hey, get back else. in the comments and holler there about with your with your capital letters. No, bro, yeah. I understand that Jerry Jones donate to the program. <laughs> Look, I understand that he donate to the program, bro. But what I'm saying is when has he came out and said he going to put this much money behind the NIL for the football team? That's my question. He didn't say he was going to do nothing for the football team. Oh, what would you say, OD? No, he said he was doing nothing for the football team. Okay, that's all I want to say. That's, that's it. But what he say he gonna do for the basketball team for Kyler Perry? I mean, I think he said he would he would double any nil money that uh, any player that was thinking about going to Kentucky he would double their money. I'm just saying, bro. I'm just saying. <laughs> that's what I'm just saying, bro. Hey. Let me let me see. Ty, is you? I, I unmuted put, you. I want to uh, see if you. I just put a link. Check it out. That's that's Jerry Jones's comments, mm-hmm. Mello. I'll just put it in the chat. Uh, okay, I can't click on that. So you got to be in the chat to click on that. Chat gang, what's the one on Ty? What's going on, fellas? Can you hear me? We good. We can hear you. Uh, I'm gonna swap you out, Mello. Yes, yeah. sir. We good, man. How's it going? Doing all right, man. It was it was uh, nice to meet you, you boys at the at the uh, walk ons. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Awesome, man. It was really great. To yes, hear, sir. Man. Thanks for coming out and kicking it with us, man. The uh, oh, you know, man. Anytime y'all were in town, I had to stop by. Uh, the well, I'm I feel like I'm way behind now, but I I was gonna call in, in earlier about the Bobby Vitrino, which y'all were talking about with Bobby Vitrino, and if he was kind of how that would play out and I, I i agree with uh brim when he called in earlier uh, he's tied at the hip with Pittman. i don't i don't know that I, I don't really know um i mean first off if his offense is great right like if he puts up great numbers well I, one would imagine in today's football that you know this game is so offensive oriented to begin with well if Patri- Reno's getting it done on the offensive side of the ball unless the defense's bottom completely falls out, then you probably win seven games, and that might be enough to keep him. I don't know. Uh, Sam, that is. But if, if the offense is cheeks, then it's, I mean, you know, I don't care what the defense does. They don't, they don't have the talent on defense for the defense to carry this team. So it really, I feel like it's going to come down to the offense and, and just kind of how they roll. Uh, but no, I, I don't think. And, and, and the other thing too is, and I get hey, Ty, turn your mic up a little bit. People want Bobby Petrino. Hey, turn your mic up a little bit. You yeah, you you a little low. Turn your mic up a bit. I was trying to turn it down because you y'all were talking oh, about the perfect. feedback, and I wanted to. It, it may have not been you. We good? Yeah, you perfect now. So I I, I think if if. You know, if it's a bad year, I mean, Petrino's gone. But to the people who who want Bobby back, I want to know why. Like, I I can't figure it out as a head coach. I really, I really, I don't get it. Didn't have a lot of people from A and M travel with him. You know, one 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 guy who uh, who who participated during spring camp this year. 
one guy. No one followed him. Uh, now, their offense was better last year. I think they were top 25 scoring offense. I want to say they are somewhere floating around like the top 50 in total offense. But uh, his time at, at Missouri State, say what you want about it, about it being at, at uh, Missouri State, the guy went 18 and 15 overall. You know, his last year at Louisville, two and eight before they axed him. Like, I, I mean, I, I'm appreciative of what he did from, you know, <laughs> his last two years here, especially. I like what he did in 2010, 2011 when he had Ryan Mallett and Tyler Wilson and all those weapons from Warren. It was great. But I just, I don't think that Bobby Petrino, that head coach yeah, version of Bobby Petrino is going to walk through the doors. And it's just not – I don't think it's going to happen. This is um, I, This I, is what I feel. I like what he did, but this is kind of how over. I feel. Yeah, this is kind of how I feel about it. I feel like Bobby Petrino is – we remember such good times with Bobby Petrino. You did, we, we all do. We, yeah. we remember, I mean, the high-flying offense. We remember just winning. We remember that. And – you know, you're addicted to that. It's kind of like everybody had that one girl. You know what I'm saying? That, but the bah, 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 bah. You know what I'm saying? And you, you still be like, woo, but you know, but so and so and so. You know, I'm gonna bah, bah. And I think that's how we feel about Bobby Petrino because it was such a good time at the at the time, and we just want that feeling again. If someone else gave us that feeling, then you, that's when you start to forget about her. You know what I mean? But no one's given us that feeling again yet. So we still have to reminisce about the old school feeling with Bobby Petrino. Yeah. On what he did his first time here. He could be a great OC. I could be wrong. He could be great. Uh, and I think they're going to be good. I'm, I'm curious to see how Taylor Green plays out. You know, what Bobby said about um, Jackson, uh, Lamar Jackson. They didn't know what they had until they saw him play live. Um, and then, you know, obviously you think about all the camps they went through with him and then they finally got to see him and it, it wasn't until game time when they knew what they had. And I kind of feel like that's going to be, we're going to know everything we need to know about Taylor probably uh, Oklahoma state, even though it's a big 12, we know big 12, they don't know how to spell defense over, over there, but, uh, still that's going to be a step up in terms of quality of opponent. But, uh, I, I like Bobby again, what he did here the first time was great other than the you know, the blonde and the bike and all that. But uh, uh -oh. we'll see how this unfolds. But I, 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 I still – I don't understand people who want him as a head coach. I just – I don't know. I, you're not getting 2011 Bobby Vitrino, head coach Bobby Vitrino through them doors. Why Why? why do you well, say that? Like, oh, because it, it, if everything that we, we remember about Bobby, when he left here, it's unfinished business. So we want Bobby to come back and finish the business. Now, my question to everybody is this. Why do you want Bobby Petrino as the head coach if Sam Pittman is dismissed? Because everybody here just why about would pretty I, much like Pitt, Petrino. You're saying why would I not want him or why would why, I want why, him? Why would you want him to be the coach? Gotcha. Uh, go ahead, Mo, we're going to start ahead. with you. Like, well, I think... Well, go ahead, Kyler. Go ahead. I, I mean, I think I think it's like OD said, man. It's we ain't had that feeling of success since he left. Once he left, we went downhill, and we just feel like Bobby can bring that back. I mean, not, I mean not OD, but um, what G said. It just it just, just we we miss that. We want that back. We we hungry for that again, and that's the last man that gave us that feeling of man. We actually can be a decent football team. So I think just like G Home said, it's just, man, we, we want that feeling back. We miss that feeling and we got them right here in the doors. Why not make them the head, head honcho? That's my intake on. I just feel like we just we miss it and we want that back and he the last to give it to us. Wes. Yeah, I mean I I, I admittedly live in the past, uh, because <laughs> we've been terrible since he left. But I will say this. I feel like Petrino would be that coach that gets us back on track. I'm not necessarily saying we're going to win 10 or 11 games uh, under him, but maybe he gets us back on the right track. We know he's 63 years old, so he's not going to coach very long. 
So maybe he gets us on track, gets yeah. gets the enthusiasm back in the program, and then uh, you know hands the 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 football off to an up and comer after that. The other thing is I I just don't know. I mean who who are we gonna get? Uh, I, <laughs> other than an up and comer, we would have to take a risk on someone. Hey Ty, go on hit it for us, man. Hey, Ty, Who you gonna Who get? Who you gonna get? <laughs> <laughs> Who you gonna get? <laughs> <laughs> no, I like Ty when he says uh, juggling balls. <laughs> Who you gonna? Who you gonna get? <laughs> juggling balls. I want to go find somebody. Who you gonna get? <laughs> hey. So 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 Ty, I'm gonna give you an alternate question. Then we are gonna move down the line. You you got six million dollars to pay a, a coach. Who you gonna get? I mean, are we? Is this like a hypothetical world where like we? I mean, whoever whoever's available for six million. Anybody but like Nick Saban. A, like, <laughs> man. <laughs> Man, I don't know. That's that's actually a tough. Qu- I've not given that a whole lot of thought. I, can I tell you who I think they might target? And it's going to sound obvious after I mention it. Sure. If, and I think he would definitely come here for six million. Uh, he happens to be from here, and he's the head coach at SMU. Rhett Lashley. I knew you were going to say that. Uh, <laughs> I mean, and I listen. I'm not saying that's who I would take. But I can tell you from folks that I have talked to up here in NWA, there are some people that give money to the U of A that are interested. And I had a talk with another, I'm, I'm not going to say his name, but another media guy who a couple of years ago, I guess, uh, I don't know if they reached out to his family. And when I mean they, I mean that media person, not the U of A, asked if they thought Rhett would be interested in the job. And apparently he acted like he would be receptive to it. Now, again, this is a, you know how this works. It's always proxies. It's always, you know, so-and-so said, so-and-so said. But Rhett Lashley, I I could see. Now, it would be, it's a different kind of job for someone like him because if you come back home and you fail, (laughs) they're going to run you out of NWA, big dog. So, Mm -hmm. you know, he may not want that job, and this could all be nonsense. But the guy that told me that, I I mean – I believe what he says. I'll just say that. He's never shot me wrong before. So he feels like hmm. if they wanted to go get Rhett, they could probably – they'd have a shot at, at at least getting an interview with him. But I, I don't know, man. $6 million, anyone I want, I don't know. Uh, you know, okay. McVay with the Rams keeps trying to retire. Maybe they could bring Maybe they could bring my boy down to Arkansas. <laughs> man, he's too young uh, he's to come to Arkansas. He's only got two Super Bowl appearances with a trophy. Yeah. No, I, I don't. I don't. I don't know. Just don't, I, I, I really. That's hey, a tough. I'd have to just give that don't. A lot just don't bring the Bears coach down here. We'll be all right. That's another pit. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, like, I want McVay to stay we, in, in we, Los we, Angeles. I'm, I'm not gonna buy into the to the to this to this slander of my Chicago <laughs> Bears tonight, <laughs> man. Hey, hey Justin. <laughs> <laughs> Justin. So uh, I know you all about embracing the hog, and you you don't like to live in the future. You okay? You want to see Sam Pittman be successful, as all of us do, because we ain't going to complain if you have nine wins. But hypothetically, Bobby does what Bobby do. What would be your reason for saying, I want Bobby even if Sam is dismissed? And if you didn't want him, I'm going to give you another caveat. If you didn't want him, who would you spend your $6 million on? You muted. Did I mute you? I think you muted yourself. No, I did that. My bad. There we go. Okay. Um, I mean, uh, honestly, if if Petrino comes in and we do get those nine wins, we do get eight wins or whatever, Sam's not getting fired. But if I had six million, I mean – like my question earlier, like we were talking about in the spaces, who is out there? Who really is realistically out there? Okay. we. I, I don't have the answer for that. I don't have the answer for it. But yeah. I'm like who I said, yeah. But I mean, 
he's going to kind of be set up for failure because he's going to have to rebuild again. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. That's true. That's 100% true. Mo, I'm going to give you the same question, bro. Okay. So, G and Ty bring up very good points. G, on this hand, says that we would like the nostalgia. Ty says that nobody should want Bobby Petrino as the coach based on the past. I think that the best gift that Bobby Petrino can give us other than being head coach is to be the best doggone offensive coordinator he could possibly be and to babysit Sam Pittman for as long as he possibly can to get to some wins in order to put Arkansas in a, in a, in a decent position to go get a, an actual coach in two to three years. I don't, I don't want Sam Pittman for the next three to five. I think two to three is a nice window for Bobby Petrino to reassert himself and reestablish himself as the offensive mind that we know and love, but to also give enough guidance and tutelage to Sam Pittman to be able to make decent game time decisions in order to not lose us games because our special teams is going to suck. But I don't want Bobby Petrino as to be, I don't want Bobby Petrino to be that coach if Sam Pittman is fired. I think that he can be the best mm. possible offensive court possibly be right now. That would be that would be a gift enough to me to see the type of high flying offenses that we saw when he was the head coach with him as the offensive coordinator. Okay, I would interesting. Be mm. Box. Um, I the reason it's two reasons I won't. I, I I take Pittman because he better than Sam Pittman. I take Petrino because he better than Sam Pittman. And the other reason is I want to see what – I mean, we already know what Petrino did without NIL. I want to see what he can do with NIL. Because you can sit here and, and, and say what he – with the, his bad season, he done have more good seasons than bad seasons. So I want to see what he can do with NIL money. That's the reason I want him. Okay. Mm. So just just to FYI, if I muted you, it's because I'm getting feedback from you. So if you start talking and you muted and nobody hears you, that's the reason why. Uh if you got anything coming out of your speakers, it's feedback. So that's why I had to mute some of the people that's on the panel. So just keep that in mind. Um I am going to take a quick hot second, quick break, because I got some super chats I need to read. Give me a hot second here. Give me a second. It's it's taking its time. Come on. You don't want to act right. So we're gonna read them right here. How about that? Jeremiah, Bobby Petrina. Oh, here we go. It finally came up. All right. Bobby Petrino gives the Hog fans nostalgia. We was winning. When he was here, we just want the feeling again to having a winning program. Mm -hmm. Facts. Yeah. Absolutely, That's man. Facts. Thank you for supporting yeah. the channel. Bam, 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 bam. Moon, I'm trying to the see resident what that would be like. statistician. Jeremiah looks like Drew. What up? <laughs> <laughs> he says, if you, have, if you are a big-time donor, do you make a big donation to help with NIL even if you feel the coach is incompetent? Or wait until there's a good coach. Mm. Mm. Hey, mm. that's, a, that's a good point. We'll that, was, uh, that, that was lightweight. Let's, lightweight. We'll come back to that. We'll that's lightweight. Let's, that a couple shots. Uh, Boss Hall, as again, support the channel, man. We appreciate you. He said Cal wasn't on anybody's list. So I think the board will go big. I don't want Bobby P. Mm. Mm. Hey, how many people we got in here? Okay. All right. So, hey, let me get my, my my answer off. Okay. Go ahead, G. I didn't get my answer off, but I'm going to ask y'all. I mean, I kind of already answered mine, but so let me ask you everybody on the panel just a quick yes or no question. Do you guys feel like Bobby Petrino is a great recruiter? Mo, what say you? Is Bobby Petrino a good a good recruiter? No. Overall, no. To his system, yes. Yeah. 
Gotcha. Justin. Hold on, I gotta unmute you, Justin. I'm sorry. All right, go ahead. Okay, okay. I'm here. Am I having feedback? Yes, but don't yeah. worry. About it. We can hear you. No. Okay. No, I don't. I don't think he's a great recruiter. I think we got other recruiters on our staff that are good, but I don't think he's a good recruiter. Gotcha. Ty, what say you? No. Mm. Did you hear me? Wes? Yeah, we heard you. Yes, I did. Yep. Wes? Bobby Trino, good recruiter? Hey, I'll, I, I'll, I'll just say I haven't seen him with NIL money. But offensively, yes. Mm. Mm. Hey, Kyle, what about you? Uh, give me... I'm 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 gonna go with Wes. I think so. Mm. Hey, Mark, do you want me to who who next? Is you me? What I'm try, I'm ready to cook. Uh, hey, well, I'll, uh, let Box I'll cook right quick. Box, cook. what say you? I I think he I, I think he is when he want to be because I think he the one got Braylon Russell up there, honestly. So I think he is when he want to be. Because he did get Taylor Green, he did get Braylon Russell, I think. Because Braylon Russell had done, well, I don't think he was coming without Bobby P. Hmm. So for me, I, and I'll let OD cook, I think um, Bobby Petrino might be a good position recruiter. I think he can recruit good quarterbacks. Um, you know, I, I, that's, what, that's how I feel about Bobby. I, I don't know, overall, I mean, he just seemed a little sneaky to me talking to the parents. You know, he just got has that little kind of about himself. So that's how I feel about him as a as a recruiter. But I think he's a good position recruiter. Od, uh, I'm gonna say this, man, and I'm gonna take a a, a weird approach to my answer. Uh, you ever been to like one of your homeboys' house and you go in the refrigerator and they ain't got nothing in there? He'd be like, man, what y'all, what y'all? And then four or five hours later, they, mom, they mama come out <laughs> with a know. meal that's like, oh, my God, where you get this stuff from? That's Bobby Petrino. <laughs> he ain't got to have four man, or five star recruits. He can make some out of nothing. He had three star recruits that he made into NFL players. I don't nobody care about what you can do with four or five star recruits. You give me what you got in the refrigerator, and I'm going to make a meal out of it. That's what Bobby P do. That's what Bobby P do. Okay. Now, but you know that's what that's so clearly my take Bobby, on Bobby. You ain't got you ain't got to be all that. Bobby P can make a meal out of that hamburger helper box and some tuna fish over there in the corner. That's all I'm saying. Whoa. But he got a bad attitude sometimes. Man, you gotta hey, man. put up. We gotta we gotta put up with him. You know what I'm saying? He might cuss you out sometimes. You gotta put up with that. We all got bad attitudes sometimes. So did Saban. I mean, it, so did Saban. <laughs> Hey, Wes, you said you had a follow-up, man. I mean, I'm not you saying. You can't take a little cuss and you don't need playing sports. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, my, my thought was right along with yours, Oliver. I mean, maybe he's not the greatest recruiter, mm -hmm. but he can turn those three stars into four stars, and that's really what we need because at Arkansas, we're going to have a hard time getting five stars every year. So we got to have a developer of talent. Yep. Yep. All right. So this is what I'm going to do just for a second. I got somebody in the green room. I'm going to go get them. So I'm going to put one person in the back, but you ain't got to leave. But I'm going to put one person in the back real quick so I can bring them up. But uh, I got something I want to ask. Well, Wes, Wes clicked off, so we can bring my other guy up. Man, we got Jeff in the building. We can already we already know he on the elliptical. You know that's what he do every time he call in. Man. Hey, yeah, I'm finna say you at the gym, <laughs> Jeff. <laughs> hey, you know he at the hey. So Jeff, I got off the, the elliptical just so I hey, can get. See, on I here. knew he was at the gym. I, I said I bet he at the gym. <laughs> hey, so Jeff, let me ask you this question, man. Actually, you wanted to call in because I know you got something specific you want to say. So I'm gonna let you cook. 
And then we'll come back to the questions later. Wait, 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 wait. Which thing is it that you're thinking that I'm one to say? Because I was actually joining on here to join in about who the Hogs should hire if they got six million dollars for football. Well, go ahead and do it. We, we we can go back to that. So let's get it. Okay. Well, if you got six million dollars, you're probably in this day and age not going to get any other coach from a Power Five school unless they're getting ready to get fired. And okay. So, because they're just going to use, you know, they're just going to use that interest just to renegotiate their contract or whatever school that they're at. So, if you got six million dollars, you either got to get somebody who's not currently coaching, Dan Mullen, or an Urban Meyer, or you got to pull somebody from like the mid majors, which isn't a bad thing because I mean sometimes you can pull somebody from the mid majors, but but you know if you got six million dollars, you're not going to be able to say, oh, I'm going to get. You know, uh, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not gonna get, I'm gonna get Dabo Sweeney or some shit. That, that that's not gonna happen. That so, will make eleven uh, million dollars. I think, I think that if you got six million dollars, and obviously we're not really that worried about character issues, you try and uh, see if Urban Meyer will want to come out of retirement and coach a little bit of college football again. That's me. No, we'll pass. I. I take him though. I ain't gonna lie. I take anybody right now, but I'm happy with what we got. But I think that lends to what Justin has been saying the entire time: embrace what we got. Because you see, the big name coaches like Dabo Sweeney makes eleven million dollars. Eleven. Arkansas ain't paying nobody eleven million dollars. So maybe Justin I mean, owns or something. Clemson did. That- Who? They might. No, they're not doing it, bro. I refuse to believe it. Hey, man, hold on. This, I bet you somebody named Clemson play, talked that too. A basketball coach, seven million dollars. You said what? What's the? Co- Go ahead, uh, uh, Bo. I was gonna ask, what's the coach's name down there at Florida State right now that was at uh, Memphis before he went there? He he played ball at UCA. I I have no idea. Anybody know? Because right now, Florida State, I would go get him. Oh, I know you, Coach. Be- the uh, Florida State, you said, right? Yeah, Florida State's head coach right now. Uh, let me he played ball. He played over he him to get Pittman, yeah. though. They passed over him to get Pittman, though. I, but the thing is, right now, Mike Florida Norvell. State is in, in a situation. Right now, Florida State is trying to leave the ACC. He's also a proven head coach in a decent in a decent conference, but he's also a proven coach in the ACC in a weak ACC. But I think that that would be a good hire. I think that that would be a great hire for Arkansas football. Why would why would he come back? He he would. Why would you? Why would he even think to come back now? He got Florida State rolling, even though they got obliterated Mm -hmm. in the. You got Florida State rolling, but they're limited. Like it's proven, like you can go undefeated at Florida State and not get to a, a, a college football playoff. If you go undefeated at Arkansas, you're guaranteed a spot in the college football playoff. But but is he not building that team? He's still building. He I, ain't I, finished. I think that right now with with the Big Ten and the SEC creating this super conference type situation, I think that Florida State is going to be on the outside looking in. Yeah, Florida State to Arkansas is a step down, Nima, but you got to understand, like, what the situation that Florida State is in right now, Arkansas might be an attractive job just because it's in a different a different situation financially with, with the whole conference, with the whole conference realignment situation. He ain't coming to Arkansas. <laughs> right, <laughs> no way. I don't think that's happening. <laughs> no, right. Don't worry about it. Forget that. <laughs> no. Let me read my super chat, man. Before Sam Pittman did. Hold on one second, box. Let me read this super chat. I'm gonna come and get you. He says, uh, "Fish man, shout out to you, man. Thanks for supporting the channel." He says, "I know Pittman ain't the answer because look how bad Mr. Guru's O line was. Super trash, man. Hey." 
Yeah. Yeah. He owned to something. Mike Norvell would play Arkansas for a pay raise. Eric, thanks for supporting the channel, man. Mm. Mm. Everybody has Everybody saying the same thing. Same thing. <laughs> <laughs> Let me yeah. jump back over here, man. All right, here we go. This what the hey, go ahead. Bro. Box. I think um, Pittman and KJ did the same thing. They lived off Burks. Once Burke left, it started going downhill. They ain't know how to go back up the hill. For Pittman, he got two legitimate wide receivers this year that could do the same thing for him that Burks did. Andrew and Broden with a couple of sprinkled in. But ever since Burks left, both of them went down because Burks made them look good. Okay. Mm. Well, had had uh, KJ like a uh, preseason Heisman <laughs> candidate. Mm. Hey, Matt, don't be scared, man. You can always come on the show. <laughs> My guy, Matt, he was on Twitter, then he switched to YouTube. So <laughs> let me, oh, I got another super chat here. If I can get to it. There he is. Hey, man. Outdoor smiles, outdoor says. Get PJ Flett. Look who he got from Bentonville. Hmm. Man, this guy done pulled a he done pulled a rabbit out of his hat, man. PJ Flett. Hey, can I give a shout out real quick? Man, go ahead. We we waiting right now. PJ Flett. I want to get a shout out. I want to get a shout out to Ty. Because, Ty, you came and kicked it with us in Fairville, and you kicking up tonight. I appreciate you, bro, for real. Because a lot of these knuckleheads on these podcasts are not going to do what you do. So you got my so. utmost respect. <laughs> I'm going to support your channel till the day I die, and that's real. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, with that, that might not be much longer the way his back be hurting. <laughs> he about to be a right. bar of soap like, anyway. <laughs> Hey, but while I'm so, here, I'm, ki hey, I'm kicking it. While I'm here, I'm kicking it with Ty. Hey, hey, Ty, you got two more weeks of support from Coach Box. Use it up. Yeah. Use it wisely. <laughs> hey, y'all almost best. lost me last Saturday going up that hill, though, for real. PJ Fleck from Minnesota. Hey, okay. Oliver, Oliver. Yes, sir. Post the link to get into the chat so that Matt can get on there. He doesn't have the link in the chat to get on. He you know, up with us. I I actually can't for some reason. Uh, my comments are not working tonight. So let me see if I can copy it on the iPad. Give me a second, and let me see. Here. Or if anybody has a copy of the link on there. No, nah, I, I mean I got the link. I just gotta jump over here to YouTube and post and, it again. And how are y'all feeling about? Saw a Pine Bluff game being moved to a Thursday. Stupid. Man, that's trash. Super trash. They threw it all off. We gonna still go to the game, but we ain't, we can't we can't kick it like we was going to. Yeah, I'm not <laughs> missing going to the game though. God. Yeah, I'm calling off work and Friday. I'm not missing <laughs> this one. I missed the spring. Yeah. Gives you more time to hey. prepare. Yeah. Yeah. Facts. Yeah. All right, so, so maybe people that. will be there in town. Uh, that's that's a Thursday night game. Uh, man, we might do a we might do a little meet and greet. Oh, Oliver won't be here. Me and DZ will be here. We might. What you mean? Link I ain't gonna up be someplace. This. What you mean? You, yeah, that's right. Od will be. Well, Od come to I, the game. I work from home. So, I can pull up where I want to pull up. <laughs> pull up. Pull up. <laughs> yeah, we gonna kick it, man, in uh, in Little Rock. Shoot, we we we'll, we'll go out and kick it in Little Rock somewhere. Yeah. We just saying we can't tailgate because they switched it up. That was just terrible. It was really terrible. As long as y'all, hey, Horrible. hey, don't forget, OD is gonna let y'all. I mean, G Holmes is gonna let y'all know the week of the game where we are gonna be at because his <laughs> his plan <laughs> sucks. <laughs> hey right. man. So I got somebody in the we green room. We Who wants to off. volunteer to go off the screen? Because I got to move somebody out. 
Hey, my phone finna die. I appreciate y'all guys having me on, man. I bet. Hey, we'll holler at you later, All man. Right, y'all we'll y'all follow y'all. my guy, Kay, uh, Kaylee, scouting. Hey, look, man, before you go, give yourself a shout out, man. Tell everybody where they can find you. I'm, all right, man, you can find me on, hey, it's all love, but it's Calais Scouting Report. You know, Calais. I'm from um that great nation of Warren, Arkansas, where, you know, Jay Wright, Greg Childs, Chris Gregg, and um, the last one, Traylon Burks, come from, from Warren, Arkansas. But I do uh, football, basketball content on college, SEC, uh, I mean, Calais Scouting Report. Pre- appreciate you guys, man. I'm going to just watch from the phone. All right, man. Appreciate you. All right. Awesome, so man. Got, appreciate you, bro. All we're right. going to bring oh, yeah. Matt in the building, and I got a prop. Who did I just drop off? Hold up. Uh, Khalid. No, nah, I got seven, eight. Who did I just drop off? Give me a second. All right, Matt. We got you on here now, man. Hold up, Justin, you wanted to come off, didn't you? Okay. So I'm going to go back to my other one. I got two minutes. I got two minutes here. Box, you still going to the game, though, right? Please. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Yeah, I'm I'm still still, still going to the game. I got to see who's going to win the halftime show. <laughs> that ain't no contest. <laughs> hey, what's up, Matt? How you man, doing tonight, man? What's, what's up, good? Matt? We good, man. We man, good. I what's going on with you? Man, how life in you know, Alabama? I, I was sitting here listening to y'all tonight, and uh, I just I just had to get on here because normally, normally I agree with about 95% what y'all say. But, but I got to disagree with y'all just a little bit. We we okay. here for Uh-oh, it. That's what the barbershop here. about, baby. That's why all about if, the barbershop. If y'all baby. think if y'all think six million dollars is all they're gonna have to spend on a new coach, you are sadly and seriously mistaken. That's what I told him, Matt. We we I just throwing money thing. out there. We don't know. I, we just talking. I, man, I, I told him something. I'm gonna that. tell you. I'm gonna tell you like, and and I got this. I got this from a chicken man. I'm not gonna say which chicken man, but I got it from a chicken man. There is a serious groundswell in Northwest Arkansas and Central Arkansas right now to get the money generated to get the kind of coach we're going to have to have to move forward in the future. It's coming. I have had conversations with players as as late as yesterday. Be still. You know, the, the word says be still and wait. And that's what I told <laughs> them, be still and wait. Like that. I like it. Hey man, it sounds like uh Matt came in here and put, you know, drop some, you know, some word on the streets. I, I'm just saying, I, I've told him be still and wait. It sounds like Lord word on patience. If word on the street. And, and I'm telling you that there's people up there, there's moves getting made, there's money getting there's serious money getting talked about. And it it's gonna take and I've said this for a long time and I posted it on uh on Twitter last week when they announced Coach Cal's hiring, what you've got is a perfect storm of, and, and excuse my language, but it's going to turn into a major dick measuring contest between these billionaires. <laughs> um, what I say a couple of weeks ago, what I say, what, the, the old white money has woke up. That's, a, that's that old white money. That's what that's you say. That old white money. Them rich white men is 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 getting back hey, involved. Man. And, and they get back involved. Hey, look, <laughs> look, cause cause I mean, let's be real, fellas. The, 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 av- asking the average Razorback fan. I mean, the gr- gross medium house in household income in Arkansas is, I think it's less than thirty two thousand dollars a year. So to expect it out of the regular households in the state of Arkansas is foolish. It's it's. Uh, it's bad business. Yeah. So to get the Tysons, to get Alice Walton, to get the Stevens, to get Frank Fletcher, Chris Crane, and I'm calling names. I ain't shy. I ain't shy. Mm. The Hunt. Well, they got it. Get those folks mobilized. Get them back involved, and that's how things get turned around. Because we got the facilities. And I said this a couple of weeks ago, fellas. We got the facilities. 
Yeah, facilities ain't the problem. No, it's not. It ain't. Mm. But but I'm going to speak on something, and I don't know if y'all talked about this or not, but when you're getting told one thing by one man and getting told something by somebody else, ain't a good look. Mm. Yeah, it ain't a good look. Ain't a good look. Mm. Who you going to trust? You know, I mean, let's just be the truth. Let's, let's just speak the truth. I mean, it, it's 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 bad business. It's It's bad economics. So, you know, I'm looking at, you know, I think, I, and I said this to somebody today. I think even if he wins eight games, I think he's gone. Mm. Dang. And that's strong. I, I think he wins eight games. I think they push him out. Because Ooh. I don't think the people up there that have the money, that would want to spend the money, feel comfortable handing him a bag. Mm. Hey, but y'all know what? <clears throat> Making some really good points because that's that goes back to what I was saying about this conference realignment stuff. Like right now, that's that's a real big talk in sports, period. And if Arkansas is not in position with a with a with a solid head coach to move forward, Arkansas is gonna be at the bottom of the totem pole for mm-hmm. at least a decade. Believe me. Now, they've already made the move for basketball, but Based on what Matt is saying right now, if he thinks that they're still going to push Sam Pippen out at eight wins, that's huge because that means that they're really about to put some money together and go get somebody. We don't need. We, we don't know who it is yet. I, I, I truly believe that that you're looking at a perfect storm situation because it, 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 I mean, what, raise your hand and be honest. Who would have thought 14 days ago that we would have hired Calipar, Calipari? Yeah. <laughs> All right, Ty. Serious. Have a good one, man. I mean, no, who, hey, who uh, would have thought we would have hired that cat? I mean, who would have thought we would have been able to generate the money to hire that guy? Mm-hmm. Mm. Box, you what know, you think? It's, I think if they can give Calipari seven million, they can give the football coach eight, nine, or ten million. I think they want to give football the money. They just don't want to give it to Pittman. Mm. The buy will be let less. Let me tell you something. Ne- the, the buy will be less next year. Yep. I think that's when it's going to happen. I don't think the boosters is sold on Pittman none whatsoever. So, I think we're going to win seven games next year, maybe eight. I, I, I said don't think seven. We got the quarterback box. I don't think we got the quarterback to win seven games. Hold on, well, hold on, stop the press. Wait a minute, that's what I've been stop saying. the press. Oh, oh, wait a minute. Hold on, we got to cook on that. Me and box, me and box is like. On that heavy. Mo, I think on that train with us because I feel like they hiding Malachi Singleton. Bruh. But what's your take on Taylor Green, though? Taylor Green's got a hitch in his throw and can't throw in a pocket. Ooh. Hey. Watch the tape. Turn it on. Who? Watch the tape. Mm. I got if he stuff. had – he struggled okay. against Mountain West competition – which is not mm. SEC SEC level defensive lines and linebackers and defensive schemes. What do you think he's going to do against Texas A&M and LSU and Auburn and and Ole Miss and State and and Texas? They, can the kid run? Yeah, absolutely. He's fast as grease hogs, not. But <laughs> he he ain't gonna. You can't win these games. He's not going to overpower people. I mean, he's 200. He might be 225 pounds if he's soaking wet. Mm. They're mm-hmm. hiding he look good. Kids. I mean, Let, let's just he, let's just rip the band aid off right now. They're mm-hmm. hiding kids. They're hiding the Metcalf boys. Woo! Woo! They're hiding Woo! The Get the shot. We need some shots, man. They're hiding, They're hiding the who? kids. They're Ooh. hiding beyond those. Ooh. Hey, let me say let, let me say this for you for you. Let hey, man, ain't... Let, me, let me say this for you, Cook, G. Holmes. This is the thing. Everybody hot and green fast. Everybody on SC defense fast. Yeah, LSU got a 4 3 4 4 linebacker. So everybody on the SEC is fast. So that fast crap don't mean nothing unless you Michael Vick. And last time I seen, it ain't been a lot of them running around. Mm. So all mm. the all them all them touch to all the all them touches that we seen during the spring game. That's a head knocked off against SEC defense. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
<laughs> all right. All I want what I want. Coach I'll, used to call this them boys you drag out the black plastic and roll them up and throw them in a hole. Well, <laughs> oh, man, hey. Now I thought he looked good under under the set of pads, man. I thought he had a nice build. He didn't look overly skinny to where he would be fragile. You know, getting hit, or taking hits in the pocket. I, I think I made the comment that he had kind of like the Cam Newton type frame. So, and he's fast. So. I mean, and I felt like he made all, I mean, I felt like he can make all the throws. I, I mean, when you say he has a hitch in his throw, I mean, you know, so does uh, 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 Patrick Mahomes. He has a little hitch in his throw, but he somehow made his way with it. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. He, Patrick Mahomes, bro. I'm just saying, man. I'm just Come saying, on, bro. Man. Hey, I'll, you, I'll, hey, let's, 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 let's break it down to mechanics. Let's break it down to mechanics. How many quarterbacks has Bobby Petrino had in his system in the last 20 years that was a mobile quarterback? They were pocket quarterbacks. Hold on, hold on, hold on. They all was they all was uh running was quarterbacks except for uh Mallet. Mallet. Nah. They all ran. Nah, that nah. Shelly boy at it, uh Missouri State was mobile. He all all of his mobile. quarterbacks is mobile. He Every last mobile. one of them. No, 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 no. Tyler Wilson had two concrete feet. Come on, man, get real. <laughs> did he, but did he really coach Tyler Wilson? He was gone by the end. No, he coached Tyler. Bro, Tyler he coached Tyler. Tyler. I don't even remember. Petrino. He had his fingerprints all over Tyler. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, John so, L. Smith. I mean, go back to when he was at Louisville. He had, I mean, really the only quarterback he had that was mobile at Louisville was he had Teddy Bridgewater. For, for a minute, I mean, like a cup of coffee, and then had uh, had Lamar Jackson for two years. Yeah, hmm. I, I'm 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 just telling you. I sat down when the kid got picked, and they said he was signing. I looked at his tape from Boise. If he's the best, we got we're in trouble. I was talking to somebody at the spring game. Where I was getting my hot dog, and they said. And Andrew Armstrong had three receptions, so many yards, and touchdown. That's good stats. But I turned around and said he should have had more if he had been if the quarterback had looked his way. Yeah. And during that time, we were sitting there complaining about why he wasn't looking that way. Yeah. <clears throat> and so. So apparently, I have ruffled some feathers because people are thinking I need we need to play all freshmen because man. I said <laughs> the Metcalfs need to play. Uh, Matt, you spin. Let me, let me let me lay this out for you. Did you see that hit TJ laid on Dylan High Saturday? I know y'all was there. I know y'all seen it in person, right? Yeah, Luke. Yeah, yeah, we saw it. If 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 if, if T if, if Dylan hadn't curled up in a ball, TJ to put that kid out of game. Man, tell me there's a harder hitting harder hitting defensive a, back than TJ. I don't know. I, I don't know if he had put him out of the game because I think he would he would he would. He'd have been a good hit. Yeah, been a good hit. I don't think he'll have put him out the game type of hit. I don't know, man. I've seen TJ Metcalf come downhill on people. The running backs are scared of him now. TJ hey. Metcalf is a good hitter, but I don't think that would have put him out the game type of hit. Hey man, I I saw I saw a hit he put on on Braylon Russell, and I didn't even I thought it was the zero that we had last year. Uh, green. I was like, oh, that's green. green. I went back and I'm like, oh, that's Braylon Russell getting ran over, just straight smashed. And I'm like, wow, why is this guy not in the game? Now, I will say this: TJ got to tighten up on his tackling because bit. you just can't be all reckless running into boys and knocking your own self out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he he got to tighten up his and I tackle. I think he would say that's a fair that's a fair uh, a fair comment. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, I just think I just think that the, there's some kids that that are on that roster right now that are get their hit. They 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 ain't putting them out there where they're supposed to be. Hmm. Interesting. That that's just now, that's just my take. Now, Mo, you based said you on, had something you wanted to I've add seen, to this. Right. Well, based on what I've seen and and the stuff that I've heard and. 
the feelings I have about the program, I just feel like that they're they're burying some kids trying to devalue them because they're afraid they're not going to be able to afford them next year if they go out and have the kind of season that I think they're capable of having. Mm. That, you, really good points because that's that goes back to the point I made about Sam mismanagement of people on the roster. Um, I truly believe that you're right. I watched film on Taylor Green, and I wasn't overly impressed. The only thing that I was impressed by with Taylor Green, I didn't get to see him in person, so I can't say. All I can see t- say is what I saw on film. But what I saw on film is that his throw, like you said, he does have a hitch. His throwing motion is inconsistent, and the velocity on the ball is not consistent either. Like, sometimes when he throws the ball, it looks like it floats. And that's bad. He made some bad. He he has made some really bad throws that I've seen on film that just went his way. But I also say that he's a very strong runner. I think he's more. I think he is fast because he has long legs and he can legs and he can stride, kind of like Matt Jones. Um, but what I also say is that there is a quarterback on that team that does read defense better than him that is just as explosive as him, that can make every single throw on that football field better than him. I promise you. But for some for some reason, that QB hadn't seen any type of clock, any type of field, any type of opportunity. And I'm not I, I just... Know the, I can tell you the reason why. There's 700,000 reasons why he ain't seen the field. That's a pro- they paying him OD. Seven hundred thousand is That's the same. Problem, is the reason yeah. why Singleton ain't seen the field. Hey, Od, that the guy out there been working his butt off. Let him talk. Hey, that's just what he do, man. Yeah, that's <laughs> what he does. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's, that's yeah, what yeah, Jeff yeah, do, yeah, man. man. Jeff, he, he got to get. He got to burn a thousand calories on the tra- <laughs> on the elliptical before he quits. I'm telling you, that's what he doing. How many calories yeah. you had, Jeff? I'm at 879 right now. I told you, he gonna get to a thousand. He gonna get off, and he gonna go drink some wine. Yeah. Him and his, his beautiful uh, fiance girlfriend, and they gonna run up all the calories again. That's what he gonna do. <laughs> it's, it's a delicate balance. It's a, it's he know what he gotta balance. do. Look, look, last Wednesday, Oliver was watching the Calipari press conference. And then 10 minutes after it's over, he's hitting refresh on Twitter to see how many commitments we got already. Yeah. <laughs> he's completely <laughs> impatient. impatient. He's completely impatient. The same thing would happen if we got a new football coach. He'd be like, why do we have this guy? Why are we paying this guy money? And what is he bringing in like right he now? He ain't doing nothing. He ain't doing right nothing. This second. <laughs> he's I expecting keep... the second that he signs a contract that all of a sudden there's going to be 10 recruits. They come yeah. in right there on the spot, standing behind them. Hey, if I'm giving you $14 million, I'm like, who you got in your back pocket right now? I need them committed tomorrow. I, I need them over here but on tomorrow. I'm going to go send the plane all, tonight. All we need is a roster before the end of the school year. What difference does it make? Hey, man, I need you in the gym playing together, five on five, yeah. every day until we can actually legally practice. Get it in. You, you, you understand that in terms of just raw talent, that by the time Calipari is done with this recruiting cycle and the transfers, in terms of just raw talent, it might be some of the best raw talent that we've ever had on campus. Between the Madonna's All-Americans and the transfers, he's likely to get in. Now, does that mean that they're going to like play like a championship team next year? I have no idea. But if anybody is going to refresh and reload – a completely barren roster with NBA level talent, it's going to be Calipari. So I don't care whether it's like right now or whether it's in three weeks or whether it's by June, as long as they're on campus before the basketball season starts, I'm good. Mm. I hear y'all. You I hear scratch. you. Let me do this real quick. We're going to come back to that conversation. I got a super chat that I have not read. Hey, man. Shout out Danny Burns, man. He says man. conferences are going to realign and make it either easier or harder harder for existing coaches. The new SWC with the additions of OU, 
and OSU should make it easier for U of A. Hmm. What what y'all think about that? I don't agree at all. You don't agree with that? No. It's not going to make it easier for Arkansas cuz Oklahoma is a is almost considered a blue blood in football. I mean, from a historical standpoint, but I don't think it'll make it easier because that those coach those programs are in higher regard than the Arkansas job right now. Mm-hmm. That's going to The the fact of the matter is that the only reason we got Calipari is because Musk left that program in a better position than he did when he got here than it was when he got here. That's what made that job attractive. Y'all have had this conversation before. So in order for Arkansas to get a real coach, the best possible thing that can happen is Arkansas can exceed all expectations this year, unload Sam Pittman, unload, and then find a real coach that can recruit going into this realignment, I'm telling you. Because we all gonna, it's going to be some sad singing and flower bringing if we keep Sam Pittman for another three to five years. And all y'all sitting back talking, to, all y'all sitting back talking about who's hiding who. Sam Pittman is hiding players, hands down. Mm. Fans, mm. we just don't. Mm. But if, and I'm telling you, three to five years, if they if they don't if they don't get some act right, it's gonna be some sad singing and flower bringing, and we are gonna be having the same mm. conversation. Our head busted by Texas and OU. Mm. I, th- I think must I think must elevate the program. For the national, what what the national meter media think of us, but he completely screwed us with the roster. Yeah. Oh yeah. Hundred percent. Yeah. You know, 100%. when I when I think about it, I mean, I've, I've somebody told me this over the weekend. They said Sam Pittman is a politician, mm. and I'm like, okay. And, 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 and I think all though. I was thinking about what what uh, what about our conversation, and my my thought process is why would Sam Pittman hire? I'm sorry, hide players, knowing that his job is on the line. He has nothing to gain by not putting his best players on the field. So, this person was explaining to me that. Sam is playing the long game. The 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 people the that saying give this guy X amount in in NIL, they're they're powerful people. And mm-hmm. when he's all said and done, even when Arkansas decides to part ways with him, they gonna pay him his money to go bye bye anyway. Yeah. But the long mm-hmm. game is, I still you told me to pay this guy to play this guy. Me and you supposed to be on the same page. Now, what can what can you do for me? You gonna let me come do something for you, or, or work here, or do that? What 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 y'all take on that whole situation? Why would I not put the best players on the field if knowing that my job is on the line versus playing this mm-hmm. politicking game? I don't know. I you think you, I I personally think that. I mean, with this being a make or break, I think he might be playing just the best players that are playing right now. I mean, people might disagree with me, but, you know, I mean, what what does he stand to gain otherwise? Because if he's not putting the best players out and winning with them, then he's going to get fired this year. So, it, I mean, it's kind of nonsensical to think that he wouldn't, but – Maybe he would. I don't know. Maybe he's self sabotaged Maybe he just wants to get fired so he can get that buyout. Who knows? But, you know, I've been coming here for a while. I know that you guys think that Hudson Clark is, you know, on the front Big of the trash. back, defensive back. Super trash. <laughs> you know, but then you look at who all got burnt last year. And if it, I mean, it, if it wasn't Nudie, like pretty much everybody was getting burnt last year somehow, some way. It wasn't just Hudson Clark. Yeah. You know, if it's not McLaughlin, pretty much everybody's getting burnt back there. So I wouldn't put it all on just one person. I think that he was playing probably with maybe one exception. You know, probably the best players that he could play at those, you know, at those positions. And again, there might be an exception, 
But we're talking about one thing rather than hiding an entire roster and benching them, if, you know, when they're actually supposed to be better than what they are. Because we all know that, like, you know, McAdoo, he would have been starting if he hadn't gotten injured. So he had to deal with losing, who was an obvious defensive back starter. Right? So, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, you got to make those types of adjustments, and that's just part of it. That's part of coaching. That's, you know, that's part of the, that's part of the game. But – Whenever they were out there, I never thought, oh, he's he should be playing somebody else instead because they never get burnt, and this guy always gets burnt. <laughs> Other than McLaughlin, pretty much everybody back there I would see would get burnt. So, Yeah, but what you got to say about him benching just... him last year, though? What's up? What you got to say about him benching him last year? What is that? Well, I don't know if that was some sort of disciplinary action. You know, I mean, that's another whole thing right there. Nothing came out about disciplinary that. Disciplinary action. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I don't know why he benched him. It makes it, That would make zero sense if he was benching him based on, like, on the field performance. But, like, you know, if a guy were to, like, you know, skip three practices, then the punishment is, is that you get benched for a half or something or you don't play for the game. I don't know if that's what happened. I have no idea, but, but I mean, it was very obvious, and I think that Pittman knew that McLaughlin was the best defensive back we had on the field. Mm -hmm. Pittman, I don't think people, he ever people like blame, people. People blame that. Pittman the whole. People blame Enos the whole year about when they had KJ in fourth and one and a mm. shotgun. Enos got fired, and guess what happened after that? They were still in fourth and one and a shotgun. That's the head coach. Yeah. That yeah, type of I agree. And that's play calling. Made. That's no, play that's, calling that, right that, there. That, I agree that's with the that. head coach. That's the kind yeah. of that's the type of decisions our man in charge makes. I agree, and I think that that's legit criticism. I think that's one hundred percent legit. You know that that seemed like it was obvious to everybody watching that 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 he should have been taking snaps under center, doing sneaks on fourth and inches. Not trying to take shotgun snaps, like everybody could see that, and I agree that was a hundred percent on Pittman. But that's a you know that's like a legit criticism that everybody can sit there and see, and say, okay, look, this is this is just stupid. Pittman's being stupid here. It's a dumb. It's just a dumb formation. It's a dumb play call in this situation. But mm. you know, I mean, the personnel thing. I don't know. You, I mean, I don't know. I don't know why McLaughlin wasn't starting those games. I ha I have no clue. It's obvious that he should have been based on talent. But if he's being disciplined for something, then, you know, what are you going to do? I don't know if he was being disciplined. But he obviously wasn't, like, not starting because there was a better defensive back that he was trying to play in his place. Or else he never would have started. Whatever happened Pittman after those two hurt. games, he started them. I think Pittman is the Doug Collins of the Chicago Bulls. That what I think. <laughs> hey Matt, I look. You've that's been that's you've been waiting unfair. to cook, man. So we're gonna let you cook because we about to shut it down. We've been on like two two hours and thirty minutes at this point. So so here here here's where it's at. You know, somebody said, "Well, if a player doesn't play." They'll just go in the portal and then leave. Mm -hmm. You players ain't stupid. You ain't got no tape. It's a death sentence to go in the portal. Yep. You've As they've you undervalued the certain vine. players. They they've undervalued some, and they've overvalued others. And when you've got a high dollar investment into an individual, I don't care whether it's a football team or a business. If you got a lot of money tied up in somebody, you expect a high performance, and you go put them out front in the spotlight until you can't. You're gonna ride that dog until you can't. That's that's human nature. When you've got a high dollar investment in it, I don't care if it's your old lady or if it's a racehorse. You're gonna ride that dog until it till you can't ride it no more. Yeah, and that's what's going on. He, they they have they have invested money and and I think there's been some some in my estimation some places I think there's been some poor valuation um, knee jerk reaction whatever you want to call it 
uh, filling holes. I still don't think that the transfer portal stuff's done. I think there's still going to be some more guys that we're going to be surprised to see uh, in the next week to 10 days that are going to jump in that portal once they figure out what their actual valuation is. I know exit meetings were, I think, Monday and Tuesday. Um, I, I just I, I just don't see, and, and I know J-Rod and some other folks, man, they're going to cook me for saying this, and it's not that I don't support them and that I won't watch them, because, man, I watched them when they were 2 and 10. I watched them when they were 10 and 2. Okay? Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, I just feel like it's a rudderless ship. It's a leadership issue. It truly is. That's my opinion. Yeah, I agree with um, that. You know, sitting back from the outside looking in, and, and, and then I have the benefit of hearing things directly from the horse's mouth in a lot of situations. And and then some of the stuff you guys have said tonight is not that far off base of, of what's actually going on behind the scenes. So, yeah. you know, it's, it's can the players that are not being evaluated properly get past the, 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 um, I don't want to call it disrespect because I think that's the wrong word. I think just getting past that, that, that devaluation and remembering why they played a game in the first place. Why did they come up there in the first place? You know, why did they pick that location out of the other 35 that they might've had offers on? It, it, can you put your head down and go to work and go earn it? And I think that's where some of these young men are going to be at. I think they're going to have to really figure out, you know, what kind of man am I going to be moving forward? Yeah. And, yeah, and I think this is going to test them this year. I really do. I think they're going to get tested early, especially that Oklahoma State game. I, I think Oklahoma State's going to give them everything they got, especially considering it's in Stillwater. Um, I'm actually thinking about going to that game. I, I am too. I mean, that used to be an every-year thing when we were in SWC. We played Oklahoma State home-and-home home every year for years, mm-hmm. um, you know. But I, I really think that you, you're looking at a perfect storm situation. I told somebody this today. They could be 4-8 and eight again, or they could be 8-4. and four. It, it, It's really that, that narrow of a, you know, if, if they overcorrect one way or the other, that that's that's what you're looking at for this fall. I, I really think that, and, and it's going to come down to August there's some guys even, that Matt? do what. I said, what about like Isaiah August Day? <laughs> Again, I think some guys got devalued and they didn't like it. Hey, he's he one and, of those people I mean, that ain't got no fair, tape. Jimmy Smith brought that kid up there. I mean, he had a personal, and a lot of these guys, that's the thing you got to understand about out-of-state kids. When they come to a university, it's a lot of times it's because of that relationship they have with that coach. Yeah. It ain't got nothing yeah. to do with what's on the front of on, on my hat right there. It's got to do with the relationship they've got with the man that brought them there. And when mm-hmm. that guy leaves, sometimes you don't feel the love like you did before that guy, when that guy was there. And you got to go seek, you got to go seek someplace else to go. Um... You know, running back room's deep, man. Braylon Russell's going to be a hoss. That kid, he, he, I worry he's too thick, if you can say such a thing. Um, mm-hmm. But got, it, it's going to be a, interesting front. to see the rotations they use at the running back position this year. But but I, I still go to the – I'm a defensive guy, and I always will be. I go to that side of the ball. That's my first place to look. If T.J. Metcalf don't get some serious run this year, we're doing something wrong. And I'm gonna keep talking about TJ. That kid's a ball player, guys. Yeah, I, I, I actually agree. I, with I'm that. fixing to put something on him, and I, I promised him. I promised him I would never do this. That kid could be Steve Atwater if he stays healthy and he gets the opportunity. Mm. He's got them kind of skills. He's got that kind of work ethic. So we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, we'll you see. Know, little brother, little brother ain't no ain't no slouch either. Nah, he he gonna be nice he's too. I think they, yeah. But hey, Mo, a, we gonna let you cook for a minute. We gonna let you cook on the last out. thing you need to say, and uh, we gonna shut this thing down, man. We've been off uh, going on three hours now, man. Mm-hmm. I don't, bruh. <laughs> it's been a long show. Yeah, man. I say, man, I agree with a lot, a, a lot with what Matt is saying. I think that. Um, 
August Dave left because Jaquinta Jackson is that deal. You know what I'm saying? Point blank, period. He's going to be that man. If he can stay healthy, he's going to be a 1,000-yard back easy. Um, but overall, man, I think that Sam Pittman is not a great CEO. He's not a good business mind. He's not, he, he doesn't know how to run a business. He doesn't know how to run an operation. That's going to be his ultimate downfall, whether, whether Bobby Petrino is successful or not. He's not the answer for the for the next uh, five years. He's not the next. He's not the answer long term for Arkansas. Um, all I want to say is, man, I appreciate the bros for allowing me to come on and rock with y'all for the past three hours. However, we all got to get up and go to work in the morning. <laughs> we all tired. Uh, but man, now nah, I appreciate it with y'all, man. And uh, I got to get back in the rotation, man, because I'm loving these conversations. I'm, hey. I'm loving this. Hey, man, I ain't even ready to get off because I really got one more thing to say. Uh, but I know, man, it's time to go to bed, man. But, but dude, this has been a great conversation, man. I'm telling you. Hey, I'm gonna ask y'all one more question. I just can't go. I can't go to bed with this on my <laughs> on my chest, man. And KJ Jackson, the lefty, the lefty. Yeah. The boy yeah. looks. I he looks special. I mean, yeah. he do look. He looking special out there. What y'all think about KJ Jackson, man? Better rest shirt him. They yeah, they 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 definitely can't waste a year. Yeah, they don't need to waste no year on him. No. You shaking your head, that boy. He he's he's the truth. I watched him, I watched yeah. him down in Montgomery the last two years. That that I, you know, y'all know I live in Birmingham, so that kid's the mm -hmm. truth. Now he's a lefty, and I'm a little weird about lefties, but th that kid's a he's special. And and I, the fact that we were able to keep him locked down and get him here after Bobby showed up is 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 huge. That kid that kid could he's the future. I really think. I mean, mm. the Singleton kid is good, but but Malachi hasn't played a, a meaningful game in over two years. So yeah, you know, don't know what he's gonna do when he gets under fire and people are running at him. But that that Jackson kid, he's he's got something. They something there. Mm -hmm. mm. I can't. Box. I think the Malik. So what you said about Malachi not playing a meaningful years, not 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 playing a meaningful game in two years. That don't mean nothing because Tua went in that championship game and won it. You got to play. You got to show what yeah. you can do in the game. Yeah. Um. I don't. I think he should red shirt this year. I think it's too much in front of him to blow a red shirt year. Go ahead and get get it acclimated to college life. Get some strength in you. Learn the system. Learn how to be a college athlete. Then come out next year and do your thing. Because from what I seen, I think he's gonna be special. So, all right. Well, man, I appreciate everybody. Hold up, G. I'm sorry, man. Did you have anything to add on that, bro? Nah, not really. I mean, he's special. G I mean, everybody saw that him making those throws and. <clears throat> just, you know, just the way he looks, it puts you in the mind of that Michael Vick, that Jalen Hurt, you know, just, you know, just good left-handed, you know, stances. So, uh, you either, for me, you either left-handed, you either good or you you terrible. you just not a quarterback. You know what I mean? If you're a left-handed quarterback, you know, you got some bad righties. But most lefties, they, they good, you know, because you, I mean, you had to grow up in a right-handed world. So, I, I like him. Hey, can I Red say shirting. one more thing? Because I want I wanted to say a last podcast, last last show. But What's that? everybody's saying Malachi is too short. Yeah, they always say that. He the same. Hey, he the same height as um, Russell Drew Wilson. Brees. Russell Wilson won a championship. Yep. Yeah, that's exactly who and he so reminds. That that height stuff. Doug Flutie showed you the height mean nothing. It's all about how Man. you can play. And so I think, I think he tall enough to play. Hey, look at uh, Patrick Mahone. He ain't no big tall dude. No, nah, he not. Well, I had to get that off my chest, man, before we get out of here, man. I appreciate everybody for coming on and rocking with us, man. We had a great show tonight. Uh, man, round of applause for everybody tonight. Man. We appreciate y'all. Appreciate y'all come kicking it with your boys. Absolutely, man. man. Uh, thank you guys, man, for rocking with us for the last, man, almost three hours now, two hours and 45 man, minutes. That, that uh, John went quick, didn't it? It did, man. Time to get away from you, man. Uh, all man. 465.
uh, in man, the live streams y'all. from Twitter and YouTube, man. We appreciate everybody, man. Uh, if you haven't, man, make sure you like uh, on uh, YouTube if you haven't. Follow us on Twitter if you ain't done that. Uh, and, man, what else is there? Uh, make sure you subscribe to us on uh, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever you get your Website. stuff at. Facebook, YouTube. Don't forget about the WooPig.com. We out there. Uh, man, with that being we said, everywhere. man, G, take us out of here, baby. Man, I thought you would never ask. <laughs> Literally, never ask. Yo, 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 it's your boy, G Holmes in the building. Yo, man, first thing we want you guys to do is experience peace of mind with Insurance Max. They are your one-stop shop for home, auto, and commercial insurance, and we're talking about all over the state. So don't wait. Call today for your free, no-obligation quote. Secure your future with Insurance Max. It's where protection meets affordability. So call now and safeguard what matters the most. You guys can give Wes, Caleb, or Sandy a call at 870 870- Five three four two eight two three. Again, that number is eight seven zero five three four two eight two three. And also, we always gonna show some love to our OGs. That's three M Electric. They are an electrical contractor serving Northwest Arkansas. They do both commercial and residential electrical contracting. These guys are on the SD VOSB. And what is that? That is a service disabled veteran owned small business. They are both dependable and reliable and no job is too big or too small. So when it comes to all of your electrical needs, give 3M Electrical a call. That number is 479-408-9865. Again, that number is 479-408-9865. And when you call these sponsors, tell them you heard it on the Woo Pig Podcast. Oh, oh, oh my God. And they got some. Special for you, man. Yo, man, I like to thank everybody for coming, kicking it with man these these fools, man. Man, we appreciate everybody coming in, kicking it with us. Um, look here, man. We are not going to be able to uh have our big tailgate party. I know I, I hate to keep telling people this, but I want to remind you guys that they switched the dang game from uh Saturday to to Thursday, so. We're going to still go to the game. So we might, OD still say he's coming in town. We're still going to the game. So we might go, uh, we might go to Twin Peaks. We might go to Twin Peaks because they stay open late enough to where we can just go out there and just, you know, just have a good time, have drink a few beers like we did <clears throat> up at Walk On. So I'm going to see if I can't uh, lock that down before a week before. And I don't want nobody talking about me. So we'll still be able to do something uh, with everybody. Uh, other than that, man, we just appreciate y'all rocking with us, man. Like OD says, man, y'all like, comment, subscribe, and go tell a friend to tell a friend to come over here to the barbershop, man, where you can just for real just be a, a Razorback fan and say what you say, you know, and, and say how you truly feel because that's the whole reason why we do it, man. It's just to be real Razorback fans and see our, our school and our alma maters and just our, our families and stuff. Just have a good time with our sports. So y'all come kicking with us. But you always know what your boy G. Holmes like to say. I said what I said. And we have. Oh, oh, oh my God. Yeah, it's the 501, baby. Uh-huh. You know how we get down on the Wolfie podcast. Woo. Shout out OD. Shout out G. Holmes. It's the baby.